The following is a presentation of The Day. Live from Stonington High School, it is the surprise undefeated 4-0 Stonington Bears and the 2-2 upstart Montville Wolves as yet right Thursday night football in the ECC comes live and all the action is on game day. Game day is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. Solutions for all your dental needs. All that's good begins with a smile. And when you visit our office, your smile's our top priority. Visit WaterfordDentalHealth.com. Their entire team is dedicated to providing you the personalized dental care you deserve. WaterfordDentalHealth.com. Casey O'Neill and soon the coach, Pasta Santabria, will be here to bring you this live Thursday night action uh, as the undefeated Stonington Bears with the veteran of all veteran coaches, A.J. Massengale, in his 21st season. Take on Montville and the second tenure. Tanner Grove in his 18th season. Hard to believe these two guys, they're my age, actually younger than me, and they've been here 30, 40 years between them. It's hard to believe. Stonington in the home brown will kick off, and McGugan will do it. Line drive, bounces at the 15-yard line, scoots through the Wolves. They pick it up near the goal line, and it's going to be a taken out past the 10. And that's where Montville will set up shop. I am joined now by the coach, my partner in crime, Mimano, Pasta Sanabria. When a start is everyone. It's good to be here, feeling great. Can you believe that Tanner Grove has been at Montville for 18 years and that AJ Massagale has been here at Stonington for 21 years? Yeah. I mean, these guys are like, I think of them as our contemporaries. It makes me realize we're old. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you think about it, AJ had a chance to coach together with him that one year I helped out transitioning with Sony Ten. he took over and he's been doing a, a great job for this program. Moppa will have the first possession Aiden Johnson will operate out of the shotgun he looks for a little slant on first down it's complete to Dante Chrisman and short gain on first down now the Bears and Wolves both coming off of buys so they've had a chance to sort of watch a lot of film on each other so there shouldn't be a lot of surprises uh, we'll talk more about this very surprise 4-0 Stonington team mm -hmm. uh, as well as this 2-2 two two Montville team I think both teams happy with where they are for different right. reasons and we'll we'll get into that as this game settles in so second down and six Johnson delayed handoff little draw bouncing it outside for a nice gain all the way up to the sticks is Hector Aponte, his favorite running back. And Aponte will have the first down. So good start for Montville. Hey, one thing I do appreciate about, you know, those bye weeks is that you can get all those players that have been your top leaders, uh, you know, healed up with those bumps and bruises. And it gives them a chance to kind of, you know, refresh their mindset. I mean, I, these are these two teams here are working their way to be on the up and up. And it's good to see Montville having that kind of identity. But Stonington looks really good tonight. First down, Wolves. They get it up to the 18-yard line. Aponte will stay in the backfield. Johnson is going to do a little half roll, slings it into the flat looking for Chrisman, and it was incomplete just outside of his reach. So we know Montville, having seen them before against Ledger, we know they have some playmakers on offense. Uh, Riley Byer and Isaiah Yard are two mm -hmm. outstanding wide receivers. Uh, and we know that Aponte is a solid running back, so we can expect that Montville. The key is for them is can that line be stable, right? We, right. Against Ledger, they held up pretty well, mm -hmm. um, but when they broke down, uh, we saw Mo where Montville's problems come into play. Right. Stonington, not a huge size-wise, but very physical, very aggressive on both sides of the line. So so far, you see Montville trying to get the ball out of Johnson's hands early. Johnson. Same pattern and incomplete again. Cooper Light on the coverage for the Bears, and that's going to bring up third down. So they had Crispin twice in the flat, but that's a long flat yeah. throw for the quarterback. Well, the out routes are, you know, one of the toughest routes you want to throw. Outs and comebacks, and, and even in college level, those are very difficult balls to throw because it's about timing, you know, and, and he does have it open. It's just trying to get that ball in that right area. You know, if he continues to attack it, hopefully there'll be some good catches and moving the chains. 
Should note that Montville's punter, Cole Turney, is out tonight. So a uh, freshman uh, will be doing the punting duties for them. With the same one we saw, Andrew Bernier, mm -hmm. who we saw back against Ledger make his debut when Turney got hurt. Yeah, he Turney, it up. Turney is out, though. So, you know, that is something for Montville to consider when they get into uh, fourth down situations is that they do not have their usual punter. Here on third down, Johnson's going to roll. He's pressured from behind and dragged down and sacked by Ethan Mahoney. Mahoney off the edge, got there before Johnson could set his feet. Fourth down, and Bernier will be pressed into duty right away to punt for Montville. Awesome. Mahoney did a great job. He kind of, I guess, must have got the green light on that as he was working and creeping towards the edge. And he was definitely in block as the rotation, you know, that rollout was away from. But he chased it down. Little LT fashion right there. So Cooper Light will stand at his own 40-yard line. Should be great field position for Stonington to start. Bernier will stand back on his own goal line. Good snap. Punt is a low wobbler. Bounces, and Light's going to let it go. And I believe it hit Light, and it's picked up by Montville. Picked up by the Wolves. Riley Beyer all the way to the 25-yard line before he's brought down. Light tried to get away from it, and I think instead it clipped his leg. You know, he, I guess he was trying to do a little quick hop and try to take advantage of the slow running, uh, you know, coverage there. But, I mean, what a mistake. That coach is going to have to talk to him about securing the ball there. That was great field position they could have had. And, you know, that little botch right there gives Montville the opportunity right now to continue their drive. So Montville, with great field position, they're going to be walking it back, though. Yeah, I think you can't, you can't uh, advance a muff punt. If I'm not mistaken, so that, that happened to me in the state championship game. <laughs> I thought I was going to be able to run in the end zone. Uh, it was a muff punt, so I guess the contact and then the ball there putting it at the spot where he recovered it. So, so Moppel will get it now at their own 40-yard line. That's gotcha. a significant 20-plus yard gain uh, on the punt. So Well designed by Coach. The, mis <laughs> <laughs> the mistake <laughs> for the, the Bears gives yes. Montville first down at their 40-yard line. Yard comes Close, twin receivers on the left. Johnson to throw on first down. Same pattern, third time in a row, and he is not yet connected on it. And the pressure coming from the edge mm -hmm. that time was applied by Dominic Ritaco. You really can't just say that the size of Stonington is something like of a factor. They're, they're fast. They're really working on some movements there in the front line. I like that 4-3 look. They're moving around, showing this different perspectives, uh, still playing some good base coverage behind it. So, uh, you know, let's see if that Montful young offensive line can understand what they're trying to do and be able to attack it. Second and 10 at the 40-yard line. Aponte stands next to Johnson to his left. Press coverage on the receivers. Twin safeties back for Stonington. Delayed handoff to Aponte. Has a hole. Slips forward for about five yards. It'll bring up third and a manageable four as Montville creeping almost to midfield. Aponte on the carry. Tackle by number seven, Charlie Warsdale. Game six, third and four. Warsdale on the tackle for the Bears. You know, the uh, Montville offensive line, when we were seeing them play against Ledger, did a really good job in the first half. And I think that, you know, when we seen the second half kind of digress, basically, you know, their conditioning and all that, that there was that opportunity to see the youthfulness in there. So hopefully, again, this is a great time with that break to have conditioning involved in there too, see if they can pick it up. Johnson on third and four. Has time, finds his man right near the sticks. <laughs> Complete and stripped, stripped. Heading down the sideline for the Bears is Ethan Mahoney. Mahoney shoved out of bounds. That was a good, good play there. The pass was complete to Castillo. Castillo was fighting for the extra yards and Mahoney came in, stripped it. And Ethan Mahoney, the senior, took it all the way inside the Montville 5. Well, it seemed like he stepped out of bounds. The referee is marking it, I believe, up at the 7. Uh, as he was tackled, he stepped out of bounds there. So. so a break for Stonington, and that means it's time for Jaden Carter, the junior quarterback, having such a great season for the Bears. Look for McGugan, bubble screens, and the like. First down, Carter keeps it himself, and he gets all the way down to the goal line. It'll be second down and goal. Well, what a turnaround of momentum here, as you thought Montville was 
kind of rolling on it. And then uh, these turnovers have been a factor this year. <laughs> Massengale next to Carter in the backfield. Carter's going to keep it himself. Spin, heads to the end zone. Touchdown, Jaden Carter. And the Bears hop on top, 6-0. Carter is a dynamic playmaker, both running and throwing the ball. And I didn't even have a chance to talk about the Bears offense. They're going to go for two. Carter to throw. Corner fade is no good. He was looking for Cole Phelan, and it will be incomplete. But the Bears will take a 6-0 lead. It's Thursday Night Football. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. <laughs> Well, as we head into a brand new season on game day, we want something brand new to come to all of you as well. Game day, launching its merchandise store for the first time. Now, as you know, greatness has no off season and game day has no off season either. We're always working to provide you the best we can do and that includes great merch. So come on into the merchandise store for game day. As the season progresses, who knows who's gonna say what That'll make it on to the next game day t-shirt. Find out in the merch store. Six nothing, Stonington on top. And you know, we're gonna talk a lot about the Bears tonight, undefeated and what their schedule looks like and what they need to do because they are uh, right now a playoff team yep. moving forward as they head towards the stretch of their schedule. And I have, I have sort of highlighted two games on their schedule. For, and Montville he knew that this was going to be an uphill battle. We'll talk about what makes Stonington so difficult here in a moment. But the kick from McGugan taken at the 10-yard line and wrestled out of bounds Zeke Stanley. And the Wolves will have it first down just on the other side of the 20-yard line. So I had a chance to watch a lot of Stonington film because uh, mm -hmm. Bacon Academy played them week number two, and I got mm -hmm. to see a lot of them. They are very, very aggressive uh, on the line, though not very big. Right. Very fast defensively. You look at their players out there, a lot of guys are on the same size. They yep. fly to the ball. Uh, they give you multiple defensive looks. Uh, but they are definitely a defense that plays fast. Yep. And so you talked about Montville's line. This is going to be the probably the fastest defense that Montville has faced, which is why we're seeing Montville struggling getting the ball out in time. There's going to be a penalty. We're going to get a legal procedure against Montville that'll back him up five yards. Offensively, Stonington uh, is very simple. They only run about five plays, right. but they do them brilliantly. Jaden Carter is a dual threat at quarterback. They love to run the bubble screens with Phelan. McGugan at tight end is one of the premier playmakers in the league. Mm -hmm. You saw Mahoney, uh, Maddox Massengale. Yep. So they're just going to go bubble screen, bubble screen, trap, quarterback draw. Like It's not a lot of different formations or plays, but they run them so well. Uh, and as soon as you cheat up on those bubble screens, yep. they're going to slip McGugan behind you. Uh, they're fun to watch. And... They're feeling that confidence right now. They look like Definitely. a team that's undefeated. Johnson to throw. High and almost intercepted right off the hands of Nathan Mahoney. And he wants that one back. But that was a the receiver zigged and the quarterback threw his egg. Zag. <laughs> yeah. Well, this defense definitely is, uh, you know, have that tenacity. You know, they, they're really lining up, making some calls. I could see what they're doing. They're reading their keys really fast. So, again, this is great coaching in the background that's been getting these kids prepared for today. Uh, I can see the expectations. Again, on the offensive side of the ball with uh, Monville, you know, they just have to continue to get better and work on it because this is a good challenge for them, and this is what they want to face. You know, we want to face a team that's going to make them better. So, so far, I see that this is good competition on both sides. Well, you know, on the Monville line, you look at it 70 and 77. Mm -hmm. That's Tyler Chan, a sophomore. sophomore. Dimitri Charles, a freshman. freshman yep. So you start in sophomore, freshman, junior. Like, this is a young offensive line yeah. for Monville. There's great things in front of them. Right. That's a big task against a veteran defense like the Bears have. Johnson going to throw. Down the sideline, single coverage. It's caught. Big play, heading straight up the middle. It's Isaiah Yard, and it might be Stonington's house. But it's Isaiah's yard. Touchdown, Montville. What a play. Never gave up on that ball. You know, it was a ball that could have been caught by either player, and boy, he took off after that. 
And there's a great call, I think, Montville recognizing that Stonington had press coverage yes. and they were putting pressure. Yep. They have got it out one-on-one -on -one to their best playmaker. Yards a big receiver. We know he has strong hands. Makes the catch. And from there, off to the races. And that's the way Montville's going to have to try to stick around oh, yeah. in this thing is Definitely. with plays like that. Well, they, i got to give credit to that line there because they did do an inside blitz, and Acosta picked up that uh, that back, picked him up real quick, gave him enough time to throw that ball. So great job by that uh, team overall with that play. So Hector Aponte, the back, yep. without that block, right, that pass doesn't get off. Nah, he so was coming in full speed, but Aponte stepped in there and really took that block. Montville's going to go for two without their kicker turning. Johnson gets it back to himself. It was a shuttle pass. Did he have enough to get in? No, he's just short. Yeah. And we're tied at six, but the, sh the shuttle pass <laughs> never happened. It bounced right back to him, and Johnson almost had a chance. But instead, it's 6-6. Six, six. Yep. We're all tied up. Let's take a breath. You're watching Game Day live on day.com. <laughs> Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in in Waterford. Tied at six here with an exciting first quarter that's not even halfway over and we've already seen big plays on both sides. Montville will kick it off. Leandro Vitorino, the freshman linebacker, will kick off because why not? <laughs> when, you're, when you're down two other kickers, you rely yep. on whoever can do it. Kick bounces at the 30, bounces off a of bear. Picked up by Phelan, and Phelan will drag past the 40-yard line where he is wrestled down nicely by the Wolves. Kaj Roach, and that's where Stonington will set up shop, and now we'll have a chance to really see their offense Definitely. with some space, and this is where you're going to see, you know, three or four plays. Look for number 40, Patrick McGugan. Uh, look for Phelan, and you're going to see a lot of Jaden Carter, the junior quarterback, going to throw. Bubble screen to Phelan. And Phelan rips off 10 yards, first down, and off we go. I watched that play 40 times. 40 times. Like. I mean, <laughs> you know, it, it's an effective play. It's really, con to us, you know, we consider that a run play. Just getting it out in the perimeter, let them make some plays like that. But again, you talk about complementary plays on offense. Their system is based on that, and as one gets covered, the other one's available, and they're making great calls. Carter hands off to Massengale, off the right side, takes on a blocker, and takes on a would-be tackler. Gets about three. It'll be second and seven. Uh, you look at Phelan's size at wide mm -hmm. receiver, too, by the way. He's a sturdy wide receiver. Definitely. So that bubble screen isn't like you're throwing it out to a you know a little guy in space. You're throwing out to a, to a big target who goes yeah. downhill immediately. Seem, definitely he has like a, a small tight end body that yes. really can handle uh, and those corners are going to have a hard time tackling him. Carter, throw, pressure, rolls, dumps it to Massengale who has about three. It'll bring up third and four. Good decision and patience from Jaden Carter. Yeah, he did like look at all his reads and he found out that there's the safety valve. And he's confident. It's just his poise looks really good tonight. This Stonington offense is very, very patient as well. They will take their time running these things. Big plays will come. Third and three. Carter to throw. Looking for Phelan. Deep down the middle. Has his man. Hits him in stride. Touchdown, Bears. Wow, Jaden Carter to Cole Phelan. What a beautiful throw and catch. He split the safeties like an axe to a tree. Bears will go for two and another in a long line of big plays that we've already seen tonight. That throw was perfect, right on the money and a great route from Phelan. And Massengale will not get there, so we'll have another 
den uh, denied two point attempt, so 12 6. Stonington on top of Moffitt. We'll keep it here yep. uh, for fear of missing a touchdown. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, that right there, Very that crisp. drive by the Bears, though, is very indicative of what you're going to see, right? You saw bubble screen. You saw, you know, a little raw, a little trap to the outside. Yep. And then they clearly saw that the safeties were pinched. Right. And they send Phelan instead of the bubble screen. He runs that. Runs right through the two safeties that were there. Actually, you know, he, they might have been playing some zone there as their eyes were focused, you know, on the on the field, you know, with instead of man to man. And so when you have a receiver that breaks through like that with his size, it's a big target. Definitely a a good opportunity for the Bears to score on. McGugan will kick the junior. See, they the seem to be very high tempo on their offense. Low line drive bounces right into the up man at the 30. Crosses the 40. And that's where Montville will have it first and 10 at their own 40 yard line. So Montville has won twice, lost twice. Mm -hmm. uh, they've beaten two teams who have really struggled. Right? So they beat Lewis Mills, who uh, hadn't won a game. They beat Ledger, who's won once. Yep. And when they played Waterford and Woodstock, two teams, by the way, who are not playing good football right now right. this year, neither Waterford or Woodstock are having, you know, classic years. They're yep. both under 500. They got drilled in both of these games. Yeah. Yeah. Coming into this week, they knew Stonington was of a caliber of team that they had not yet even seen. Exactly. Already, I'm, ha I'm proud of what Montville is accomplishing mm -hmm. uh, so far. They're, they look like they're, they have a good plan tonight. Aponte breaks it outside. Ball loose, out of bounds. It's going to end up being a loss of yards. The ball was punched, and it goes out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, the biggest thing for Montville right now is to not make key mistakes like you know, turnovers, interceptions, and, and keep this in the game. So I think that what they're doing is they're running a fundamental offense in regards to the, what they do best. Um, and, you know, if they continue to do this, they can get some points, definitely. And that's sort of the good news, bad news, is I don't know if they have the offense to, to, to have a sustained drive. Right. I do think they have the kind of offense where they can score with big plays. Yes. But yeah. I don't know if that's in their best interests either right. to, you know, put their defense on the field over and over again. So... Right now, it's about first downs, getting first downs, moving the chains. Johnson pressured up the middle, throws right as he's hit, tipped and incomplete over the top of McGugan. He was looking for Arian Castillo. <laughs> I love this zone coverage. First of all, it looked like it was man press, and it's actually a two under kind of look, and then they just push back into a two shell, and that corner reading that uh, the eyes of the quarterback was able to jump under it. I mean, it was three bears right there sealing the deal. Johnson got hit right as he was throwing the football. It's going to be third and 13, and this is the down and distance where Stonington really feasts. I would be What I'll be interested in is I'm going to be looking at Isaiah Yard, and I'm going yep. to be looking to see what Stonington – I promise you he will not be in single coverage <laughs> on this play. Yard heads to the bottom of the screen, and I, maybe I'm wrong. It looks like he's going to be in single coverage with Nathan Mahoney. Linebacker creeping. Johnson on third down, pressured, and he is sacked. Jack Goddard, the first to get there. Awesome. And hey. the Bears hold. Back in the day, we used to call that double fire where the two backers inside will run and shoot the gap or twist with the defensive lineman, and that caused a lot of confusion with the front line. The center had to choose one linebacker while the other one went through. Fourth and 20-plus yards, so Bernier will run out, and the freshman will punt. We saw Moffill struggle with long snapping. They got this first snap off. Let's see how they do. Second snap, not bad. A little float. Bernier gets off a high punt. That's taken on the run by Cooper Light. Crosses midfield and bumped out of bounds inside the 40 at the 36-yard line. So good aggressive play by Cooper Light, and the Bears are in Wolves territory. Just amazing the history of uh, playing in the ECC, Howie. These two teams have white helmets. You know, we used to see the golden helmets back in the day and then the black ones at night. And it used to be, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, one time that Marvel did have white helmets in the past. So. With the M. Yeah. Like these. These are retro. 
They also had, they've had a couple different versions, but Stonington with the gold helmets, are, I used to remember those very well. Carter, rolling right, telling his receiver to go for McGugan. He has him. McGugan, and it's touchdown! Oh, what a play! What a play. Jaden <laughs> Carter to PMG for six! They were in sync on that play. He pointed it out. He said, go downtown. I got gotcha. you. Nice toss. Dial that one up for the grade eight. <laughs> Definitely. I have no idea what kind of funky thing we just saw, but so, it didn't work. Here we go. We've been seeing the muddle huddle throughout the whole year, you know, without any action. That was a quick inside uh, matchup where they ran a kind of a fullback dive with a snap. So, you know. I am going to put it, put it out there to all of the ECC coaches. The first team that I see just line up and go for two or line up and kick it <laughs> and not do a swinging gate muddle huddle, I will show up. With a with a with a six pack of nuggets <laughs> at your school at a practice, if you for the first one I see who just lines it up one time. I, I think I think the muddle huddle has a little flavor, but it's just uh, not used like it usually used in high school and college. Seaweed has seaweed has a little flavor to yeah. it as well. I don't yeah. like it. <laughs> so alternatively, Casey, I, I will offer up a six pack to the first team that successfully okay. converts. A the, yeah. two point conversion out of that formation because <laughs> we haven't seen it. If any coach wants to give me a call, I have uh, all the Delaware State's muddle huddle plays there. We're good with, with a lot of action off of that. 18 <laughs> to 6 in the first quarter. What an exciting first quarter it's been. Looks like Ethan Mahoney is going to kick it off this time instead of McGugan. Bouncing, bouncing. Picked up at the 15 yard line. And going nowhere is Zeke Stanley. So Montville inside their own 20 will have it first and 10. This Deer Bear defense is, is really good. I think out of all the games that we've done, the Bears look pretty solid as far as their discipline on defense and how they're playing it. Um, seems like they're very well coached. I think Mahoney may have been a little shaken up on the touchdown catch. He was not in to kick it off, and he's not in on defense right now. He's grabbing some water. He looks fine, but I think maybe. He got his wind knocked out. He did, did uh, get a lot of chest bumps from his teammates after that touchdown. <laughs> Johnson, screen pass, first down, caught, tackle broken, and not much there. Well defended by the Bears as the screen pass. Went out to Castillo, but nothing there for him. Be second and ten. Johnson to Castillo. Tackle made by number eight, Finnegan X. Tell you the fan base here tonight is packed. Really good community involved right now. Well, Stonington, you know, it's funny. The, there's been so much success here at Stonington across sports. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so many teams, soccer, lacrosse, field hockey, basketball. Mm -hmm. They've had so many uh, successful teams. And the football team has been getting better over the past few years. And this right. year, they're undefeated. They've got something to be excited about. We'll talk more about this group momentarily. Shovel pass. Chrisman. And he's buried right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a loss of two. Everything third down again. Nothing there for Dante Chrisman. The Bears are hungry. Boy, they're getting off their blocks real quick and knowing what they have to do. And their tackling is really good. Third and 12. We're going to talk after this play about Stonington's schedule mm -hmm. and what I see on the schedule. And I think you'll, I'll, your insights will be most valuable. But third and 13 for Montville. And we're going to get a timeout from Montville on this third down. So we'll keep it here and talk about it a little bit. So, you know, Stonington's had an interesting start. You know, they mm -hmm. beat Northwest Catholic, who is uh, – who is, does not have a very good team this year. Yeah. And then they beat Bacon Academy 32-8. to eight. Uh, And that score is not indicative of the game. That game was actually 16-8 to eight at halftime yep. with Bacon uh, driving to tie the game. Like and then, the, uh, you know, Stonington 
punched one in in the third quarter, mm -hmm. and then punched one in very late in the fourth quarter. So that was actually a, a very competitive game with Bacon, but it put them at 2-0. and They go to Waterford, and they win an epic shootout yeah. against Waterford, who at the time, we didn't know a lot about Waterford, but we knew they were dynamic offensively, uh, and it, that turned out to be a great game. And I think that was the confidence builder that sent them to the following week where they pulled off the win against East Lyme, going back and forth, back and forth. And after East Lyme scored on the on the jet sweep option pass to right. tie the game, Stonington goes down Came the field right back and, and scored. scored. And I think that's when they sort of cemented themselves. Third and 13, Johnson to throw. Floats to the left, throws, ball is complete. If they say he caught it, yes, at the 35-yard line, yard, and he'll have a first down. Yeah, you're talking about how they started these two games. I always said every team, their first two games is always going to be how they have been putting it all in the package. You know, so there's a lot of key mistakes. There's little things that you want to, you know, work on. But as they progress, the good thing about it is the victory. Victory builds the confidence. And so what they believe in and what the coaches are bringing to them is something that's just building week after week after week. And, you know, we talk about the schedule. It always ends up being at Westerly, their big rivalry game. And I've been to a couple, I tell you, it's been a, it's a great game to go to. So they're building up to that kind of character, and I really like to see uh, a little bit more of how they're going to dominate that throughout the season. First down, Johnson. A little delayed handoff to Colin Wall. And not much there, gain of maybe a yard. So mm -hmm. they 4-0, they get their bye week. Yep. And they have what, you know, nothing, nothing to disparage Montville. Right. And I should preface all of these comments by it's high school football. Any week, weird things happen. Yes. <laughs> but this is a game Stonington should win. They they come in here feeling it's a home game. Yep. You know, this is a team we should beat. And then next week, Stonington has Weaver, who they Weaver, who's very struggled, hasn't yeah. won a game. They should handle Weaver. That puts them at six and zero. Oh. And then comes. Back-to-back -back games yes. against two of the most physical teams in the ECC. Johnson to throw. Has time. Deep ball for Castillo. Just over his outstretched hands. Well covered by Cooper Light. They go to Wyndham yep. on the 27th. And Wyndham is as physical a team. One of our game day favorites, Malachi Fowler, mm. the wrestling champion, is also a all-state linebacker there and right. they are a physical physical yeah, team. I love that team. They're really good. And then they go to then they play home here to Griswold. Griswold who's yeah. also That's the a showdown. very talented and physical team. Yep. They have to try to navigate that before going to Ledger, mm -hmm. who is a game that they should they should beat Ledger even if Ledger has figured things out and corrected things. Right. So which sets up Westerly on on so there's right now is the kind of part of the season where they need to be healthy. They just want to survive and get yep. healthy these next two weeks right. heading into those games with Wyndham and Griswold. Johnson pressured, throws off his receiver's hands incomplete. It's going to bring up fourth down. Yeah, this is a great opportunity for this team to, to win and be humble. You know, they're playing teams that they have to, you know, they feel that they're confident beating. And, and yes, and that's every challenge comes. Don't get it to your head because, again, it takes any game could really change the whole limelight of your your future here so as they continue to work towards getting to Wyndham that's where they really need to be prepared focused and put everything into play Third full circle so you know it's it's good that they're doing it now and I love their attitude and the energy it seems like all the players are really involved disciplined watching the game so uh, it's good to see this club rocking high oh. snap Phelan handles it and gets it off that's a brilliant play by the freshman Phelan and he's rewarded with a positive bounce so Stonington will have it at their own 39-yard lines, but give Andrew Bernier, rather, wow. give Bernier credit, the freshman punter, Andrew Bernier, handling the high snap. Right, exactly. And then getting it a one-step punt off, and Bernier is rewarded with the bounce. Uh, Stonington will have it at their own 39. That might be a great April. I mean, even though it was a punt, that kid found a way to get that ball out there and get him in good field position. Stonington will have it first and 10. Carter. Going to throw. Now he's going to keep it. Breaks one tackle, dives forward. He was looking for Phelan, and I think he had him on the single coverage, but the pressure from the, up the middle, and instead Carter keeps it, gains four. 
Positive play, second down, Stonington. I do like how Stonington has this kind of RPO mentality, the bubble. If it's not there, you got the deep pass, and then you got the keep. It gives him a chance to make these reads and make positive plays. And he's got his progressions. Hands off to Massengale. Straight up the middle, first down, Bears. Crosses midfield. Maddox Massengale will move the chains for the Bears. You know, it doesn't matter what Westerly's record is. That's, you know, that kind of rivalry game. But, man, if Stoneman could ever, could ever find a way going in that game 9-0, and that'll be something. We're at the end of the first period. It's 18-6. to Stonington on top of Montville. You're watching Game Day live on the day.com. Fall is here, which means it's time for Game Day's Great Eight. The best eight plays of the week submitted by you, the viewers, on any of our social media platforms. You send us the best videos from practice or the game, any sport in the fall, and we might see about putting it on the Great Eight of the week. production of the day publishing company if you'd like to support game day and help us continue to bring you the best in connecticut high school sports please consider purchasing a print or digital subscription to the day at the day.com slash subscribe we're back second quarter action underway here with first play will be with the bears right at midfield carter from the shotgun hand off straight up the middle good hole and a first down run We'll move the chains. Dominic Ritaco will get them in position. They're going to mark them a yard short, so it'll be second and one. And this is where I think Stonington becomes even more dangerous. They go quick, they go quick. The tempo is good, yeah. Hand off again to Ritaco. This time he will have the first down, and the chains will move. That offensive line is really digging hard and pushing off the, the defensive lineman. Well, again, I watched a lot of film, and you know, my as Bacon Academy prepared to play them, they said on film, you know, they just they don't look, they don't overwhelm you with size or anything, but they fire off the ball. They have good technique. They're just a very sound team, um, and they play bigger than they are. Carter to throw, plenty of time, zips it high over the head of his intended receiver Chase Spurley, incomplete. Second and ten. You know, looking at the list of coaches that are coaching for Stonington, I got to give, uh, you know, them a shout out because I've had a chance to coach them or work with them, and and they they're very reputable guys. You know, Elijah Brown, those fundamentals, and have applied it to this team. Carter takes the handoff, keeps it himself, bounces outside, big hole, first down, down the sideline, and bumped out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Jaden Carter showing off the wheels, and the Bears are in business. Not yet in the red zone. They're in the magenta zone, we'll call it. <laughs> the magenta zone. Good job, brother. <laughs> From the 22-yard line, Carter. Handoff, Rotaco. Now they're inside the 20, and so now the Bears are in the red zone. So we've had quite a busy week on game day. Monday, of course, we had our volleyball invitational at Mohegan Sun, a very successful event. Bears. Great. And now tonight, a little Thursday night football action here at Stonington as we're heading towards the championship weeks coming up at the end of the month. And, of course, at halftime, you're going to want to stay tuned for three pounds of pasta. I will tell you that it might have a little Halloween flavor. Oh, and I got an um, appetite, three too, Three pounds brother. of pasta. <laughs> Flag on the play before the play was off. Looks like that'll be against Montville, and they'll move them up five yards. It'll bring up a much shorter second and three. It's just unique then when I knew AJ is a player, you know, with that double wing and the, the Falcon, the Fitch Falcon's yeah, dominant team. run that they had. Now being a spread open guy, it's pretty cool. Spurley on the bubble screen. He'll take it to the 10-yard line. That'll be enough for a first down, and if they put him inside the 10, it'll be first and goal. Ponte on the tackle, but it will in fact be. And they got the chains out there still, which makes it first and ten from the ten and a half yard line, I suppose. 
This offense to me has multiple backs, but they're in right wide receiver positions. Just pitch and catch and run. Carter going to throw. Has a man, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Cole Phelan, one of the few inaccurate throws we've seen from Carter so far tonight. I think he had Phelan on the slant and mm -hmm. just put it just off his hip. Off his hip. That's the one you got to really, what they used to say, throw it to the face because it leads him. And uh, Throw it where he's going to be, not where he is. Exactly. Carter delayed handoff to Rataco and bowling his way to about the seven-yard line. Rataco down to the seven-yard line. Right and it's going to bring up third, and I guess it'll be six and a half yards. Yep. The Bears can get a first down on the one-yard line. So they can get a first down if they get it down to the half-yard line. Massengale back third in the seven. game, stands to the left of Carter. Carter to throw, looking. Rolling, throwing, has a man just over the outstretched hands of Cooper Light. And it'll be fourth down, and of course, Stonington will go for it. Fourth and seven. Timeout for the Bears on the play. So with that timeout, we'll take a quick timeout. 18-6 Stonington knocking on the door. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. The Day strives to cover stories our readers care about. With a feature called Curious CT, we make it easier for you to tell us what you want to know about the people, places, and issues in Southeastern Connecticut. You submit a question, readers vote, and we investigate and report. Go to theday.com slash Curious CT for more details. You ask, you vote, we investigate. Eighteen to six, Stonington on top of Montville here in the second quarter. Bears knocking on the door. It's fourth and seven from the seven and a half yard line. Bears will go for it. Massengale stands to the right of Carter. Carter looking, pump fake, lobs, and it is caught for the touchdown. PMG Patrick McGugan with his second of the ball game. Do the Stonington Bears want Nuggets? I mean, this just appears to be a regular formation. Oh, here we go. Quarterback keeper, and he waltzes in. Carter untouched. The two-point conversion is good. And with 9.22 remaining here in the second period, the Bears have opened it up. It is 26-6. to six. You know, that touchdown was a really good example of why the Bears are tough. Mm -hmm. You know, Carter, it, you, you know he's a threat to run, so they're, you know, he's, they're trying to keep contain and, and right. get pressure up the middle, but you have to stay in your lanes because you know if you break contain, he's going to take off like he did, did there on the two-point conversions. Right. And the two receivers wide are covered, and he's just waiting for Magugan to drag across, drag exactly. across, and as soon as he pops open. That's his second read, and he saw it really, really smoothly. He threw a nice, confident throw. But again, I think this offense has got a little weirdness to it where actually running backs are positioned in wide receiver positions and, and grab and go because, again, they're fast, they're elusive, and... Um, you know, credit to the coaches of putting them in a spot where they're going to make plays. Mahoney, low line drive, ground ball. Bounces and buried at the 20-yard line is Stanley, and that's where Montville will have it as they find themselves down 20 points. Big drive for Montville right now. They need to get it. I'm going to go back Sorry about that. after uh, we get come back to Stonington. When they have the ball the next time, I'm going to go back to the preseason and talk a little bit about some of the conversations I had about Stonington. But let's flip it over to Montville as they have the ball here. Two and two, a game tonight that they knew was going to be an uphill battle for them. Yep. They're waiting for Cole Turney to come back. He's supposed to be back right. Tuesday. they got a couple guys out. After this game, this is the survive health-wise because they have three games in a row at Bacon Academy, mm -hmm. Weaver, and Plainfield which are all winnable games for them. Right. Now, Bacon Academy has circled the Montville game as a winnable game for them. 
I'm sure Plainfield and Weaver have circled those games as, hey, if we're going to get a win, here's where yeah. it's going to come. Exactly. But the point is, they're winnable games for Montville. There's no reason why Montville can't win any of those three games. So that's mm -hmm. a part of their schedule with three winnable games in a row. Then they go at Griswold and Wyndham to finish the year, and those are going to be very, very difficult tough. games because yeah. of the physicality of those teams. Mm -hmm. So Montville, this game is important for them to get something positive out of this game. Delayed handoff after a muffed snap by Johnson's going nowhere. And you can see right now, Stonington is feasting right there. Mm -hmm. Starting to pin their ears back. They're going downhill. And this is where Montville is. Get something positive out of this as you head into three weeks of winnable games. Exactly. The biggest thing right there of the coaching staff has to be competitive for four quarters no matter what the situation is. And just keep on teaching these kids along the way to see those successes get to the fourth quarter. Don't be downfalling and quitting here early. Keep on working to do something positive, and then we can go in the locker room and work on those things. So it's definitely four quarters of coaching across the board for that team. Second and 13. Montville comes up to the line. Aponte stands next to Johnson. Motion man is Castillo. Johnson. Batted down at the line. Batted down by <laughs> Dominic Ritaco. And the front four Grizzlies, boy, they're putting in work today. <laughs> That's going to bring up third and long for Montville. This is the time right now for the Bears to pin their ears back. But the front four linemen, again, they're pressuring the quarterback when they have to get to him. They know when they need to get to him. When they see that he's trying to develop something, they have their eyes up. They're reading it. They're ready to bat that ball down. So, you know, great effort by that front four. Stonington is a uh, is willing to let its cornerbacks play press coverage, mm -hmm. willing to give up a big play as long as because they're going to be attacking, attacking, attacking yep. at all times. And you look at their safeties are going to take the middle of the field, but out wide, they're happy pressing on the outside. Mm -hmm. Timeout, Montville. So we'll keep it here with that timeout, talk a little bit more about Montville. So, you know, Montville uh, last year when they beat Bacon Academy was their first win in years. Uh, this year, Tanner Grove see, saw the huge growth in the program, 22 freshmen. Mm -hmm. Felt like the numbers were going in the right direction. Exactly. Felt like, like this was a year where they could start the next, the next step. Yes. Well, they've won two games. They've already made. Yeah. progress from last year and from the years prior. We talked about those three winnable games. You know, if, if Montville comes out of the season four and six, five and five, something like that, that's a huge that's step. That's a, a big step in their program, definitely. Especially with Isaiah Yard is a sophomore. Riley Byer is a junior. Aiden mm -hmm. Johnson is a junior. Hector yep. Aponte is a junior, right? The mm -hmm. offensive line, we talked about sophomore and freshman. Yep. This is a young Montville team. Outside of of Cole Turney, who's out, we have, do not call a lot of, of, of seniors. They only not have all. three or four seniors on the whole team. That's the buoy base of their future right there. Johnson, deep ball, down in looking for Castillo at midfield, incomplete. He was thrown to the outside hash, and it'll be fourth down, and Bernier will come into punt. So Montville's looking like this is a year, this was an experience year for them yeah. anyway. Two wins is great. Four wins would be... What a great stepping stone right. to the next year where a lot of seniors come, come back. In. You know, yeah. that's the year. Um, and so it's, you got to keep them in it right now yep. uh, because Stonington is – they're in different places. Yep. Stonington is the culmination. They're in a spot right now where they're ready to win right they're now. They're ready to win right now, yep. Winnable moments is the, is the key for that team. Bernier fields the snap, gets it off, bounces at midfield, takes another great bounce all the way to the 30 – three yard line where it's down so Bernier gets another good bounce and that's where Stonington will take over you're going back into the preseason right when the season was about to start and, you know we were looking at the schedule and we we're trying to figure out what teams we, we knew Killingly was going to be good we knew right. Fitch was going to be good we thought New London might surprise some people and they've been very helter skelter yeah. so far but when you read the, the comments of the coaches one set of comments really stood out to me in the preseason, and that was A.J. Massengales. Mm -hmm. He was effusive in his enthusiasm and praise of this group 
and you could tell without giving it away that he was really excited. You know, he could see, mm -hmm. like, he's really excited about this group, and he was trying to not give away everything or make statements that would go up on locker room boards. Yeah. <laughs> but you could see he was pumped about how this group had performed. Carter creating some of his own time. Flag on the play. That's probably going to be a hold or a lineman downfield. We'll see what the call is. You know, off seasons are just the biggest thing when you're trying to develop a relationship as a coach to players. And it seems like the commitment of this program um, made coach just very confident knowing that these kids are going to do what they need to do to represent their team. And so, I mean, they were out there making some plays. Penalty was actually against Montville. Well, Sideline warning. Got to give room for the chain guys to work across. <laughs> you know what? We used to always talk about the get back guy. We always had to assign a guy to keep Coach Bunicor in the back, and <laughs> as well as myself. And uh, we'll talk about that in a few, about the get back guy. Mahoney, <laughs> Jimmy Massengale, is hit in the backfield. Loss of one at the 45. So we've started to learn more and more about the Stonington and how A.J. had these kids working out in a unique and different way. They weren't in the weight room like a lot of other teams. They were on the beach. Yep. They were in the, in the woods. Yep. He had them doing military training workouts that were designed for teammates to support teammates. Amen. Yep. Little bubble screen to Phelan. Phelan has a nice... Blocker in front, gets a good gain, makes it a manageable third and short, it'll be third and two. So you heard the teammate saying, you know, when it was, when, when I was required to carry a 50 pound bag mm -hmm. up and down the beach and I couldn't do it anymore, the goal was for, the, for us to finish the task. And the only way for me to finish the task was if one of my teammates did it for me, right. which is exactly what happens in real football. Mm -hmm. Carter on a delay quarterback keeper, and he's going to be right at the first down marker. We'll have to wait and see the measurement. Carter and the keeper. You know, a lot of the things that he was he was doing definitely comes from the old military base of, of morale building. You know, it's great conditioning, but it also puts players in uh, a team perspective at the same time. How are we going to accomplish that? You know, and so, you know, when you have the military, like the Navy SEALs holding the log up or the raft up, it's about how everybody does it, and you bring a team like this to do that, that really helps them out for the whole year. Who's going to carry the logs? Hard count, got Montville to jump, and I think that's going to be a first down for the Bears. The hard count's been a big factor in, in uh, all these games. <laughs> we have, we've seen it's, a, it's a great, it's, a, it's, a, it's almost like a part of the offense, right? Yeah, it's, it's a, part of the offense. Yeah. When I need five, I'll go to the hard count. So yeah, I think you know he found something with this group, but what, what his, his point was that not every group would embrace it. Yeah, right. This group embraced it, and the kids bought into it, and they really, I mean, he said that, you know, his kids were blood, sweat, and tears, you know, in the woods and on the beach, picking each other up, and we've seen it pay off so far. Maddox Massengale gets the handoff and gets about two. It'll be second and long. And this team looks like they are fit and strong yeah. and fast. You know, they don't look like you're... You know, they're not the big... It reminds me of, like, Army, Navy, Air Force. You know, yeah. you, the, the kind of option teams that are very loose with the linemen fire off really aggressive, and they stay on their blocks, keep on moving, you know. Even though there's a mismatch, they're not going to give up. And that's the kind of attitude that you want to have uh, in that offensive line. Little screen, out it goes. Chase Spurley breaks a tackle, has a first down, and... <laughs> We'll see if, he, if his forward progress gets put back behind the uh, first down marker. He had the first down, tried to get a little more, and it ends up about a yard shy. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be third and short. I think they used the hard count. Uh, so I don't know if they think Well, that's how you take the tempo away. Monville was a very aggressive blitzing team in their concept. And now you, how you eliminate that? You run your screens. You get these hard counts. It causes them to back up. And now they're kind of thinking, what's the next play? They're not prepared. So third and a yard. Carter fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, and the run blitz of Montville is effective. Aponte shot in and made uh -huh. the tackle for a loss of three. So it'll be fourth and four, but in this territory with no kicker, Stonington is going to go for it. That's where that blitz does count. Fast and elusive right there. Good job from Montville. Again, these are winnable type of plays that you could coach your kids. And stay with it and play for four quarters can help them out throughout the year. 
Fourth down, and we have an illegal procedure penalty against Stonington. It's going to back him up even farther. So now it's going to be almost fourth and ten. So fourth and nine. Ball at the 38-yard line. Carter. Got a throw. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. There's Deep ball. Slings it. And it is off his receiver's hands in the end zone. Incomplete. He was looking for Cooper Light. And the ball just off Light's hands. Well covered by Castillo and the Montville defense holds. They got a little fight left in them and they'll take over on downs. Definitely a good win for Montville. This is where the coaches should be cheering them on and tell them, hey, stay with it. Let's get what you know, get going with this offense. So it'll be first and ten Montville ball at the 37 yard line. Johnson has a Ponte to his right. Johnson throws, batted down again by Ritako. Great job keeping his eyes on that pressure and waiting for that right moment to when the ball's released, he can get his hands up there. He almost caught it right there in the air. If it wasn't for that just being so close and batting off his hands, could have been another pick six there. Second and ten. Riley Byer down to the bottom of your screen with Nathan Mahoney on him and a flag comes in and they're going to have a procedure penalty against Montville that'll back them up five second and 15 and this is something we've seen from Montville as well where they get a little out of sorts mm -hmm. We saw that against Ledger, where in the first half, Montville could do no wrong. Yeah. And then in the second half, they couldn't really get it together. We saw penalties. and. Yeah, it's all about the discipline in this, in this opportunities right here. You, you make mistakes that can be costly. So Johnson gets back to the shotgun. Waiting, waiting, pump fake, now throws and overshoots his intended target, incomplete. Was looking for Dante Chrisman, incomplete. Definitely a good read for that one as the corner and the safety drop back for that deep receiver. But just that timing is a little bit off. If I'm looking at Montville's line properly, I'm seeing 56, Tyler McLaughlin, mm -hmm. that's a freshman. Freshman, yep. I'm seeing 77, Dimitri Charles. That's a freshman. Right. I'm seeing a sophomore in Tyler Chen, and then I'm seeing two seniors. So two seniors, two freshmen, and a sophomore. Mm -hmm. That's a young offensive line. Yeah. Getting a lot of experience. You know, I mean, in high school football, we never expect freshmen to be getting time, and they're getting a lot of valuable quality time. Third and long. Johnson. Slings it deep, has a man, and it's caught at the 40, heading down the sideline. Who else but Isaiah Yard? Mm -mm. Good run. Touchdown for Yard, and then Johnson the Yard. <coughs> you give him an inch, and he takes a yard to the <laughs> house. Montville, best play they've had today. Definitely. Throw it to Yard and let him go. 26-12, and Montville will go for two, and see, this is this is so much nicer. Isn't this so much nicer? Break I, I a believe. huddle, just a regular go for two from a regular formation. <laughs> well, you'll take a special team away, you know. That kicking game is important. <laughs> in the flat, and good. All right. He got in for the two. <laughs> Andrew McElwee, the sophomore, baseball player, tight end, and he makes the two-point conversion, so it's 26-14.
Moffville back in it, 329 remaining in the half. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. After the game, follow Game Day CT on social media to see our pick for the Scient Federal Credit Union top play. Pave the way for your students' financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high yield MySci savings account today and help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit ScientFCU.org to learn more. Twenty six fourteen, an exciting first half as far as big plays are concerned. <laughs> We've seen a little bit of everything so far. Montville will kick it off to Stonington after the second Isaiah Yard touchdown of the first half. So McGugan has two for Stonington, Yard has two for Montville. The Torino to kick off. Kick down the middle of the field, takes a hop. Straight up the middle goes Mahoney. And Mahoney gets to the 40-yard line where Stonington will have it with plenty of time, 324 remaining in the half. Bears right near. So first down, the Bears. They'll be at the 38-yard line. Mottville's defense held. Mm-hmm. And then came up with a touchdown on its own. So positive thing for the Wolves. Let's see if they can hold again. Carter is going to throw. High and just off the fingertips of McGugan. Incomplete. Now, Mountville right now is playing a good coverage. And, um, you know, I think that if they continue to kind of put that pressure that they need to get from that front four, uh, this could be another good series for them. Second and ten. Massengale stands to the left of Carter. Carter, pressure up the middle. Now he rolls right, pointing, rolling, throwing deep down the field, and it's just over the head of Chase Spurley. And that one's on Spurley. He cut the route off. Mm. If he kept running, he, he would have had a touchdown. That downtown. ball was thrown perfectly. Jaden has a way of, of communicating with his receivers while they're running the routes. As I was noticing, um, you know, they just knew that you know, one went deep and one was going short. Then he had to drag across. So there was some viable options there. But then he likes to point. You know, he likes to make sure, hey, you're doing what you got to do. He should have kept on running there. Could have been a big play there for Stonington. So third and ten. Stonington, chance to get it. Mothel, a chance to get it back. Blitz off the edge. Carter pulls it down. Rolling, flicks his wrist and throws it incomplete out of bounds. And flag on the play in the backfield where Carter was scrambling. Is that Coach Tanner there? <laughs> well, he's still got good hands. Well, he asked me to play tight end for him when I went down on the field beforehand. It looks like he could be out there playing tight end. He doesn't need me. See what the penalty is. We Holding like against Stonington, and that'll be declined. So Stonington will punt, and, and uh, Moffa will get the ball back. Another good defensive series. With three minutes remaining. You know? And I think this is the thing that Stonington has to work on, is how you continue to put the pedal to the metal and make good, decisive plays. You know, things like this was... Kind of like, okay, I'm trying to get a couple touchdowns, but if it doesn't work, let's go back to our bread and brother. No run plays in that series, and it kind of caused them to have a quick punting series. So I, I couldn't agree with you more, Coach, and I think, you know, whether it's the bubble screen mm -hmm. or the quick pass, you know, as a run, they got away from their identity, mm -hmm. and that's not what they do best. The punt from Nathan Mahoney takes a great Montville bounce and actually puts Montville into Stonington territory to start the drive. Yeah, I think that you're, you're right. Their consistency is based on that run, option, play, a couple little RPO swagger moves, and, and, you know, now they were just going three plays for big, deep passes, and it wasn't effective. And that would make teams that are competitive stay close and, you know, take over that momentum. Officials threw a flag, but they're picking it up, and the ball will be marked. I think he sneezed, and it came up the side of the bag. I thought maybe he took it out, used it as a handkerchief, Could and then be. said, it's, oh, I have to wave it off. It's hot somewhere. 
So Montville will have it in Stonington territory. Montville with a little bit of energy right now, having mm -hmm. two consecutive defensive stops and the touchdown to yard. I'll be curious to see, A, if Montville looks to go back to yard, and B, if Stonington adjusts coverage. It does not appear like they're going to. Yard is wide right, matched up single coverage with Chase Spurley. Mm -hmm. Johnson hands to Aponte. Nice run, but he's hit right at the line of scrimmage. It's crazy that he looked like he had a hole and he broke a tackle and then McGugan filled the hole quickly, no gain at all. Well, the hard seal from the outside edge making him come back inside and then you have those two big dogs that are fighting off the double teams, letting linebackers scrape over and make a play. <laughs> I love this. So McGugan came up, we've seen him a little gingerly yep. moving around. He got up and limped a little bit, and uh, Maddox Massingale tried to run on the field to take his linebacker spot. Nope. He turned to him, and he basically waved him off, waved like, him off. Like, like a pitcher on the mound saying, <laughs> like, get back. Yeah, football's, the... football's a game of bumps and bruises, but, it's, you know, you got to get used to it. you got to keep on moving. So Just... Coach Keaton, right, he used to say that. <laughs> Second and nine, Johnson stands right at midfield. Looking to throw, and it's tipped at the line, incomplete. It'll bring up third and nine. Complete, Both teams to took over. We thought, third you know, nine. last drive of the half. Now mm -hmm. flip it again. Now Stonington, if they can get a stop here, yep. they're going to get the ball back with plenty of time remaining in the half. Our dear friend... New London, New London's Arnie De La Rosa, now the Stonington <laughs> JV and assistant boys basketball coach, has a beautiful bald head right in front of us right now. He and a great smile. Gave us a little hello yeah, earlier. Got to love him right there. It, it is shiny. <laughs> Third down, handoff, and right into the run blitz of Ethan Mahoney. No chance whatsoever for Jaden Thompson. He was <laughs> hit before he even got the ball. Fourth down. Stonington will call a timeout because they want the ball back yeah. with Great 149. Ball. So yeah, Monville will punt it away. Stonington calls a timeout. So we'll take a quick break before we get down to the end of this first half. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. Well, as we head into a brand new season on Game Day, we want something brand new to come to all of you as well. Game Day launching its merchandise store for the first time. Now, as you know, greatness has no off season and game day has no off season either. We're always working to provide you the best we can do and that includes great merch. So come on into the merchandise store for game day. As the season progresses, who knows who's gonna say what that'll make it onto the next game day t-shirt. Find out in the merch store. 26-14, Stonington on top. Montville gonna punt it away on fourth and 14. Cooper Light goes back. Now he comes rushing up. It looks like they expect Montville to go for it, and they are. Johnson to throw. Heaves it deep. Looking for a yard just over his outstretched fingertips. Again, that's two times that we've seen receivers turn and backpedal instead of run with the football, and that's going to go incomplete, and it's going to give Stonington great field position as they'll take over on downs right at midfield. i got to give credit to Coach Joe trying to call a play like that when you're going into halftime. So he's expecting his defense is confident enough to hold him from getting into the end zone. We'll see what happens right now. I have confidence in Montville right now. Carter. Pleasured by Aponte. Rolls, and he is sacked. First one to get him, Jack Babukas. Babukas. This past week I've been watching highlights of the classic Hall of Famer Dick Butkus, rest in peace. You were watching Punky yeah. Brewster reruns? Yeah, that Punky Brewster too, yeah. <laughs> Second and 16. N number 51. Second and 16. I'm going to share a funny story after. Carter has his man, McGugan, on the sideline, and he is dragging folks towards the sticks. He'll be about three yards short. Or check that, Cole Phelan on the reception. I was watching on the day that Dick Butkus passed away, rest in peace, Dick Butkus. From our generation, right. Butkus was the player that was named, in my opinion, the most as it, like, you know, 
Wow, oh, forget these linebackers of today. You need to see Dick Butkus, Butkus play. That's right. Butkus. Alex Karras, but it was Dick Butkus, that's right? That's right. So I was watching the highlights that they put up on the play. Carter to throw on third down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for McGugan, but timed beautifully by Yard. And Isaiah Yard breaks it up. It'll be fourth down. So they showed like a 30-second highlight film of Butkus. <laughs> and nine... Yeah, nine out of the ten plays they showed would be illegal in the NFL yes, today. It's true. He clotheslined a guy. He horse tackled a guy. He took a picked, face mask he off. Ripped the guy's guy. head off one time. He I picked was, the running back up while his legs was up in the air and then slammed him to the ground. Carter <laughs> pressured, flicks it down the sideline for Phelan, and he brings it down. Touchdown, Stony Kid! What a catch by Cole Phelan! Unbelievable. Carter put it where only Phelan had a chance. He out-wrestled the defensive back, kept in bounds, and with 54 seconds remaining in the half, Stonington punches one in, and Montville feels wow. it all. Trust the Jaden touch. Boy, did you see how he just pushed that ball where it needed to be? Right in the outside shoulder. Right back, bubble screen to Phelan. Two-point conversion is good, but we got a flag. I think we might get some shenanigans on Cooper Light as the wide receiver doing the blocking out on the edge. I think we're going to get Light for a hold, which would be a light hold. I don't know if that's a full five yards, 15 yards. What's a light hold, like seven yards? Well, if it's L-Y-T-E, I think that's the, the singer. Um, if it's L-I-T-E, then that's a drink. And then if it's L-I-G-H-T, that means it's light as a feather. So I think we've got light going on. And is, in fact, Kim <laughs> Stonington. <laughs> <laughs> he lighting it up. <laughs> and it is L I G H T. So that'll back the Bears up. So their two point conversion will go back. Carter, twin receivers now, twin running backs, I should say. Flag down, and we'll see what this call is. Mm -hmm. The officials are looking at each other across a crowded room. Trying to figure out what the and it is. Survey says uh, nothing. Not yet. We're hoping. Okay. Backpedaling. They just weren't ready. Officials just needed. Oh. They needed a duel. Right. Probably had to set the chains. Carter. Running backs on either side. Carter to throw in the corner. Has his man McGugan for two. Woo! What a play. Jaden Carter with another flick of the wrist. McGugan gets the feet down. And Stonington back on top 20, 34-14, with 54 seconds remaining here in the first half. Yeah, I like that attitude on McGugan because before that series, he was upset that he gave, they gave up the touchdown. Got himself together, you know, put that water bottle down a little bit hard, but he went out there and made a play. Bumps and bruises, he still moved forward. 54 seconds, that's time for two more possessions. At least the way this game, the way this, I mean, it felt like we've seen, what, five possessions since the three-minute mark. And I don't see any reason why, if, if Mothel's going to try to throw the football, <laughs> why not? It might be another possession. You never know. With you know talent, we haven't, a had, a, we, we haven't had a lot of competitive games on game day this year. They've, they've been kind of one-sided. But this is as exciting a game as we've had as far as big plays out. I mean, there's been so many big plays in this game. Mm -hmm. Montville will have it at their own 25-yard line. I'll be interested to see what Coach Grove does here with 48 seconds remaining. I don't could expect run the clock. to even play you know, soft on this. They're probably going to stay with what they got and uh, see if they can hold him down. Well, you know he, he that he burned it, that Stonington burned a timeout earlier. So mm -hmm. we know if Mothville wants to run the clock out, they can. Mm -hmm. But they also could take three shots down the field. We'll have right. to wait and see. Johnson will stand at his own 22-yard line. That does not give me the impression that they're going to run the clock out. Johnson to throw. Deep for yard. Caught! And is he inbounds? They're marking yes, it. They're, they're marking saying it. he's inbounds. Wow. Caught at the 44-yard line. 
Isaiah Yard having a night for the Wolves. Brother Peter, you was no joke. You you called it out there. <laughs> Isaiah Yard is a sophomore, and I think the league is on notice. Yes, definitely. First down, Wolves. Johnson stands at midfield. Johnson looking again for Yard and well covered, incomplete. Chase Spurley beat him to the inside, took away the angle on the football, and it's second down. But Stonington Coach isn't changing. Is yeah, he's shooting it down. They haven't changed a bit. Still matching one -on -one, match, you know, one on one with him. The backside, they have safety coverage. It's a lot of confidence with this defense. Well, it helps when, when your offense moves the ball as well. Yes. I and mean, then you have a 20-point lead, you can maybe a little, a little more adventurous. Mm -hmm. Second down. This time Johnson looks left. Deep ball for Beyer. Incomplete. Beyer was double covered. That time the safety rolled over. Cooper Light and Mahoney on the coverage. Third and ten. You know, give credit to Momville that they're playing that kind of game that they're really just wanting to be competitive and staying with it. That's the attitude that you want to have this young team to have, you know, competing with a good Stonington team. So um, it's a valuable moment right now for them. Third and 10, 28 seconds remaining. Johnson at midfield. Going to throw. Pressured straight up the middle. Throws and it's incomplete, almost intercepted. Getting his hands on it was Justin Rodriguez. It'll be fourth down. and There is a possibility. <laughs> I don't get the impression that either of these teams enjoy punting. They certainly don't have kick. They don't have traditional kickers. Montville's punter has done a great job, but you can tell that Stonington doesn't love to punt either. So The only kicking going on is on kickoff. <laughs> that's, the only, that's right, the only one they find acceptable. <laughs> that's right. We will kick it off, but other than that... <laughs> It's like the old uh, early days of, of Madden, right? There was yep. no punting involved. We there just was gonna, no punting. We're going to throw it deep on fourth down, and we'll see what happens. That's it. <laughs> or if I go back to Tecmo Bowl, hand, it off, to, I was hand, say, it, off to, hand it off to Bo Jackson. Bo and Jackson. Throw it deep to Jerry Rice, whatever you need That's to do. That's right. Who was the tight end? Young? That was for, for, the, for the 49ers. It was always an automatic play. It was a glitch. And Bo Jackson was amazing in that game. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna pause you there because uh, I don't want to get in d down, down deeper down this conversation because that might be a future pound of pasta. I'm just saying I don't well. want to <laughs> I don't want to get down the, I don't want to go down that road just yet. So we got 24 <laughs> seconds remaining here in the in the uh, first half. 34-14, Stonington on top of what has been a a game Montville Wolf squad. A very exciting first half. Uh, at halftime, of course, you're gonna want to stay tuned for. Some of our great content, and then the aforementioned three pounds of pasta, mm, mm, mm. and then of course there's always a little, little plate, little dish, little bowl of whoppy on the other side That's of our right. three pounds of pasta. So. Put in the flavor. Is 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 there is, is wappy a uh, is there a, some kind of Scandinavian dessert named uh, named the wappy <laughs> that we can you know? Not that I know. Would be that's too bad. It would be nice if we, I could order up a, a little plate of wappy. <laughs> Johnson to throw off the fingertips of the intended target. Chrisman incomplete. The Bears will take over. Hey, 18 seconds. Who knows? Who knows? Isn't there a, uh, isn't there a pastry? Uh, it's like uh, two cakes with um, with whipped cream in the middle of it. It's called a whoppy pie, isn't it? That's whoopee. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I think we can name it whatever. If we made it ourselves, yeah. we, Peter made it. it would, if he made it, it'd be a whoppy pie. A whoppy pie. And I see Stonington lining up in a formation here. Carter in the... Montville's going to a soft shell. But Carter's going to throw. Aponte rushes. Carter most dangerous. But he throws it out of bounds. And if I'm not mistaken, I didn't see a receiver anywhere near him. But that'll be incomplete, second down. 
Didn't we go through this in the Montville Ledger game and Aiden Johnson got penalized for intentional grounding for doing exactly that for what appeared to be the pro play? And they said you, that's intentional grounding because there was no receiver. That's a good point. And now, I mean, okay, second down. <laughs> Ten seconds remaining. I just want to throw a little something there that cinnamon buns are very famous Scandinavian treats. I just found that out right now. Carter pressured, throws, and has Spurley out of bounds with four seconds remaining. It'll be enough to get them on the other side of midfield, so it'll be third down, but it'll be the last play of the half, and Stonington will take its last timeout. Says you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's got, well, it'll be the last play without some form of penalty stoppage to it. Fourth down, uh, third down, ball's marked at the 49-yard line. So I think Carter has the arm to put this thing in the end zone, and I don't see any reason why with McGugan and Phelan's size that Stonington wouldn't try to work on the old uh, Hail Mary play. Legion Berry Jams. Wow, it's a lot of good Scandinavian food. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really pumped up here because they got also waffles was the OG in Scandinavia. Waffles, smoked cod roll. Boy, is my belly grumbling today. Did you stop at Bestimos on, in the uh, old Mystic Village on the way here? No, I had to Nor book it over here. Norwegian for, gra <laughs> Norwegian for grandmother. Yeah. Carter, going to throw. Pressured. Now he rolls, heaves deep into the end zone, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Phelan, but well defended, and we are mercifully at halftime. 34 for the Bears, 14 for the Wolves. Come on back on the other side for some video content and the aforementioned three pounds of pasta. You're watching Game Day live on Day.com. Time for Game Day's Grade 8 Plays of the Week. At number 8, let's ring that bell. Skylar Bell, with her 1,000th career dig, surpassing who? Her sister, Madison. That's right, it's bragging rights in the Bell family for Skylar. Great job over 1,000 digs. At number 7, Devin Lamoth of Putnam High School gets the pitch, Heads to the outside, and well, he gone. That's right, 70 yards, touchdown, Quinnebog Valley, the pride taken against Cheney Tech. At number six, don't try to throw against Caden Simons Gaskin, cause KK gonna make a play play. That's right, get outside, show the speed, show the moves, take it to the house for the Whalers, pick six, 80 yards against Weaver. At number five, Ben Seifert of the St. Bernard's Boys Soccer versus Griswold takes the pass from Alex Grawl. Top corner, goal! At number four, don't tell Drew Farino of the Bacon Academy Boys that he doesn't have an angle. Wait, there's no possible way that he can get that short side. How did he get it in the corner? Oh boy, Drew. At number three, corner kick. East Lime girls soccer versus Ledger. Summer Antonino with the game winning header in overtime. Hey, remember Casper Merzinski of Massic Soccer? Well, here he is again with the laser. 30 yards, buries it. But at number one, Stonington boys soccer. Sal Alessio versus Bacon Academy, 40 yards out. Let it fly and score! How did he get that over the keeper? Those are your grade A. Submit yours and maybe next week it can be you. Greatness has no off-season. Not if you want to get faster.
Not if you want to get stronger. Not if you want to get better. This is where it all begins. This is our playground. This is where we get ready. Where we get faster. Where we get stronger. Where, where we, we get, get better. better. For game day. 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 Greatness on game day. Hey, Reef. Do I know you? Be careful, Avery. Avery Mays, Waterford High School. You gonna win again? I don't know. I hope so. Are you? I hope so, too. It's time for Game Day's Grade 8 Plays of the Week. Let's start with the Killingly Brooklyn Mike Rose. Thomas Neal to Timothy Hipple, touchdown through the air. Those kids in Killingly can throw the ball. But when I grow up, and when they grow up, they want to be Soren Reef. Six touchdowns, 276 yards. Oh, and let me just carry you into the end zone. Nothing brings down Reef. Not to be outdone, seen live on game day. How about Brady Sutman? Well, let me stutter step here, and let me, let me just shuck you, and well, let me show some speed now. Oh, I'm going to outrun you. Maybe not. Uh, mush! And then all the way to the end zone, and then, you know what? Let me just show off. I can jump up really high, too, because I can do it all, says Sutman. Avery Brooks, Lyman Volleyball. Hey, guys. Don't do an overpass because, ow, oh, put it down, Avery, and flex on. East Lime has not given up a goal in soccer yet this year. Senior captain Dominic Stefanski scores off the beautiful given goal from fellow senior captain Brandon Oso, 2-0 over NFA. Speaking of East Lime, let's use the pitcher. Fake the jet sweep and let Alex Dreyfus throw a bomb to Greg Page, 88 yards against Stonington. Hey Alex, you just made the grade eight. You know what, if I have a 40 yard free kick and I don't know what to do, let's have the D1 commit do it. Missile from Hannah Dorney of Massick. Oh, that was pretty. But at number one, trailing one nothing against Killingly. New London's Erlen Almendarez. Look at the laser beam into the upper corner to tie it at one, send it into overtime, and then off the throw. Nico Churis, stutter step, pass to himself, let it fly. Oh, it's a goal! Whalers win! Whalers win! Hey, send us your plays, and maybe you can make next week's grade eight. is a production of The Day Publishing Company. If you'd like to support Game Day and help us continue to bring you the best in Connecticut high school sports, please consider purchasing a print or digital subscription to The Day at theday.com slash subscribe. It's time for Game Day's Grade 8 Plays of the Week. East Lime Field Hockey Freshman Goalkeeper Emma Van Dusen. Penalty shot? No problem. Look at the save. 1-1 tie with Stonington. All the way from Massic Boys Soccer versus Immaculate, Casper Merzinski, 33 yards out, Ghosts Immaculate, Waterford, football. Let's talk Jax, Higgins, and Quinn Speller. Higgins has the arm, Speller has the speed. How about elusiveness? Whoa, what, what? Let's see that again. Oh, puts the brakes on for the touchdown. 
Ledger boys, soccer versus Fitch. Ben Crow fights the rain, fights the team, spins, shoots. Oh, what a goal from Crow. Waterford girls soccer at number four. They're twinning. That's right, Charlotte and Paige Jessick. First, it's Charlotte set up by her twin sister Paige. And then, well, let's flip the script. Charlotte to Paige. Back to Charlotte. Boom! Goal, Waterford, as they beat Ledger 5-0. Branford football. We had twin sisters. Well, how about some brotherly love in Branford? Akil Lamodi swats the pass. All right, the big brother Jelani, who returns it for the touchdown for Branford. At number two, Ryder Manning, seventh grader from Pomfret. He plays for WPTP, and the Hawks know that Ryder can run. 90 yards down the sideline. Hawks beat Southbridge Mass 31-0. Football name, Ryder Manning. But at number one, NFA Boys Soccer versus St. Bernard's. Let's start with Colton Hawkins. The free kick, save Hawkins. Oh, he lost it. Hawkins, another save. And then, oh, look at Cole Bray using his head. Those are the great eight plays of the week. Send us your plays and see if you can make next week's great eight. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in Waterford. Over 20 submissions for this week's Grade 8. Let's see who made it. Starting off at number 8, Waterford Boys Soccer hadn't beaten Stonington since 2018. But Griffin Neal's about to change all that. One on four, no problem. Look at him rip it for the goal. Lancers win 2-1. Hey kids, you ever heard of John Riggins, Earl Campbell? Well, look him up because Branford's Cole Snyder does his best imitation of the big guys. Break and tackles, not to be brought down. 40-yard touchdown for Branford. Well, you know Killingly High School's Soren Reef. He's impossible to bring down. Load up the box. Watch him get the toss and run over. No, he's going to throw it. Aiden Lamont, wide open. Reef can do it all for Killingly. Let's go to number five and the water for girls soccer. Cameron Dickinson with the corner kick. Bullet high and over and there's, oh, Charlotte Jessick with the header. Lancers win undefeated to start the season. You've heard of OBJ? Well, how about PMG? Stonington football quarterback Jaden Carter in the corner. Patrick McGugan with the one-handed grab for the Bears. Sometimes it's so pretty you need to see it twice. Look at Skylar Bell, the libero for East Lime, digging it, keeping it alive, not once, oh, but twice. Viking Volleyball. Colby Cowan, Montville Soccer. 35 yards out, not a problem. The laser, top shelf Goal! Winner over St. Bernard's. But at number one, let's get special. Special teams for East Lime. Malachi Harris picks up the block from Cyrus Astaire, returns it. Touchdown, 37-21 win over Woodstock. Those are your great eight plays of the week. Let's see your plays for next week's great eight. We are back at halftime. Stonington on top of Montville, and that means it's time for three pounds of pasta, where I get to ask three unfootball-related or maybe football-related questions could be, could be. of the coach, and his special, unique insight into those things get brought. So 
Let's get rolling. First pound of pasta. Of course, I mentioned that it is October. Mm. Uh, and it means that, you know, uh, Halloween is uh, right down the corner. And so my first question to you is, uh, what would you consider to be the premier candy to be received on Halloween? And conversely, the worst candy to be received on Halloween? Every kid loves those little nerds with the ropes and, the, you know, anything that's colorful and very, very energetic, like the uh, kind of Starburst Skittles, little packages like that. You know, M&Ms, all that have color, I think, are the favorites. But you know the old one is, and everybody till this day will keep it there until it becomes Formica. Candy corn. Can't, can't deal with it. I don't it hurts my teeth. like candy corn. Candy corn. I, am, I, now, I, I, I got to <laughs> tell you, you missed the big two. I mean, is it? Doesn't it all start and end with Snickers I know, and Reese's? But you know Reese's. what? Ever since I've been playing, you know, like at post post football, for some reason, chocolate I, I don't do well with. It gives me a little bit of that achita, and it gives me a little headache. But I love those little candy ropes and Twizzlers, things like that. I'm more sparkly. So you're going uh, pretty, pretty, pretty sweet. And that's, that's, I'm going. And that's why I got to take I'm, my sugar medicine. I want, <laughs> I want the, I want the, the Snicker bar. Like the baby I want Ruth, the baby Ruth, I want the Milky Way. Yeah, see these these show me that the, the, the people, caramellos. Yes, not oh, oh, caramellos. Yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah, they, they got the caramel inside the. I chocolate. know what a caramello the is. The Rolos, they were called Rolos back in the day. Nobody, remember? nobody gives Rolos or caramellos. Yeah. At it depends on which town you're in. What neighborhood <laughs> are you going to for <laughs> Rolos and caramellos? Listen, I've got some experience. You know, I traveled through all the southeastern region with my little kids back in the day, and I tell you, when you go down the Waterford Beach side. You get you get the scores, you get the caramellos, you get some of that the sweet Scored. treats. Wow, wow right? Am I throwing that in? The peanut butter brittle, you know? Hey, oh, well, 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 now you see, now you just can't. But you wanted sweets like that. That's so why I'm throwing it at yeah, you. No one gives out peanut brittle. If you, if someone gave you peanut brittle on Halloween, you can't do it. You're now. sending it to the police station. You can't be taking exactly. homemade peanut brittle. Back brittle. in the day when we grew up, we had it all in baggies. Remember that we used to dig our hands right in there thing and wipe our nose and keep on moving forward. You know? But you're right. Candy corn, you're right, brother. It's candy corn's good. the worst. It's the worst. It's, it's the worst. absolute worst. I'd rather them give me a penny. That and Christmas candy were the same back-to-back. -back, you know, I'd rather them give me a rusty penny Yeah. than candy corn. I would do that. i hold it right here on the side of my mouth. All right. <laughs> Second pound of bust pasta. We're going to stay on the Halloween theme here. Ooh. What's the greatest in your mind, looking back over your many years on this earth? Okay. What's the best Halloween costume you ever brought, that you ever wore, that you ever busted out in? On Halloween. Okay, I did it one night, and it was for like three friends because I told them that I did have the Halloween spirit. Um, for the most part, I was always a giver. I like to be out there and you know, taking care of the kids. But I put that sumo outfit on because I, I love sumo. I watch it every other month. Ladies and gentlemen, sumo is an amazing sport. And so my friend came up to me and said, yo, could you think this could fit you? And I said, okay, I'm going to give it to you. And I put on the show. I had the, the whole top piece, and I came out there, and I was just like, putting the leg up in the air and slamming on the ground and then that fan was kicking in the back so it was cool um, and people love that uh, that sumo look you know with this body fit yeah you don't I mean sumo try to wear one of those things wrapped around your belly it's pretty tight it ain't Hanes and it's not fruit, fruit of the looms tell you that I have a leprechaun <laughs> I, I have the inflatable leprechaun so I, yes, I, I see? do understand that okay but, we're vibing brothers but we're I, vibing but uh, <laughs> my best my, my best Halloween costume ever I think was uh, I was like 22 years old, uh, and they were having a Halloween party at uh, what was then September's uh, yep. Shake Shaky Jakes, whatever it was at yep. the time. <laughs> and uh, my buddy said, "Look, we gotta go." And so we needed. A, I, I don't have a Halloween costume, so I, we went up to Spencer's Gifts. Yes, and good spot. And I'm looking around for stuff. Good spot. And I find a workman's button-down shirt that says Billy, yep. and on the other side it was like you know uh, Johnson's Tractor Supply. It was yep. just, just a just a <laughs> shirt. I wore it, and I wore a pair of my buddy's jeans who'd worked construction. They were all ripped up and beat up, and, and I uh, put on these mirrored Elvis sunglasses, and I put a <laughs> toothpick in my mouth, and everyone was like, what, what's your costume? Yeah. I'm like, Billy don't wear a costume. Oh, shoot. And I went right into character, and all night you, long, you I was played Billy. the role. I, pl I got into it. I, I Billy was. Billy don't play. Billy don't wow. have a costume. Well, I'm I thought Billy. you was. I'm gonna be honest. I thought you was gonna be the brawny guy from huh. you know the paper towel. Well, they were like, they like you decided your, to be Billy. Who's your friend? They're like, that, that's Billy. <laughs> Well, what's Billy's costume? Billy don't wear a costume. Billy don't wear a costume. Yeah, so I was, Boy. I was, so I'm not sure if it was a costume or if I just became <laughs> the, Billy. When, when you became the identity, you felt that energy coming through. That you know, for, you was him for one night. Yeah. yeah, and you know who did that? Dom DeLuise too. When he became him, in Cannonball Run. Dun dun dun. I would, I would love to be him one day. That that's he was my hero. I actually, that's a great. That's one of the best references uh, yeah. ever. 
Uh, real quick, just yep. while we're uh, in the Cannonball Run, uh, Dean Martin and Sammy Davis Jr. dressed mm -hmm. as priests. Yep. And they had, uh, they grabbed a two seat, uh, like Ferrari, Ferrari right? It was the Ferrari, the red Ferrari. Right, yeah. And Ferrari, and. Uh, Bless you, my brothers. And, yeah. and, he, and, and Sammy Davis goes, God is our co pilot. God and is Dean our Martin co pilot. Goes, goes, two seats. There's two seats. Where's he going to sit? And he gave me, Where's he going to sit? Two seats. Where's he going to sit? Yeah. And I say that because uh, that shows my range. Cannonball run. Very nice. Classic. All right, our final pound of pasta. I'm with it. Final my, pound of pasta. My belly's grumbling. Let's do this. I have. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a golfer. Yes, and, sir. And uh, I, I have seen uh, alligators sunning themselves mm -hmm. uh, on the ponds of Florida. I've heard of snakes in the in the woods mm -hmm. of, of the Bahamas. Uh, but I just recently saw a video from Brisbane, Australia, wow. of uh, of the water hazard in Brisbane, Australia, which was home to eight bull sharks. Lord have they mercy. Had been, they had flooding. These bull sharks washed in. The floods receded. And uh, so it got me thinking of what was the strangest thing I've ever seen on the golf course, so mm -hmm. let me ask you, okay. what's the strangest animal encounter that you have ever ever had yourself? Wow. Am I in a game or specific? I'm going to go brought whatever, wherever you okay. want. Okay. So my first year living at my new place up in Occam, um, I was concerned about this noise, and I thought it was people throwing rocks. Because, you know, when you lived in the city, you know, you hear kids would throw rocks and run around, and I didn't realize it was acorn season. Okay, um, so when that was falling down, I got upset. I, I grabbed the stick. I went outside, and there were five squirrels just looking at me like, "Yo, can we grab this on the floor?" Like, and I'm looking at them, and I was like awkwardly intimidated because this is the first time I actually left New London, which, when the city, you know, those city animals, they talk to you. Yeah. And these were just like, "Can we just grab these?" And I was like, you know, a little intimidated. I closed the door again, and I decided that I realize I'm I'm, I'm with nature. So those five little, I used to call them the Jackson Five. <laughs> They were the Jackson 5, God bless them, and then one hawk came out of one day, and it was the Jackson, Jackson 4. four. Yeah. Well, they lost Tito. The squirrels are kind of yeah intimidating because, to me, I still know that they're part of the rat family. Right? Right. So I don't, I don't like them like that. People think the squirrels are nice. I'm not. Even right. Alvin, Simon, and Theodore. Right before we start the second half, I'm going to bring Peter Wappy real quick in because we got a little, just a little, little shredding of yep. Wappy on the side. Got to give Wappy. Halloween candy. What's the worst? What's the best? Best Halloween candy is candy corn pumpkins handed out loose. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You know, I, I can picture them too. I love those. No one going to the Wappy household <laughs> if that's what's being given out of candy. Happy old meal with him, my brother. I love oh, you. Thank you. Peter, what are you doing to me? Oh, what a great one. What's, what's the worst then? <laughs> if that's the best, what's the, what's the worst? Mopfo with a short kick. Phelan takes it for the Bears, heads outside. Crispin's there, shoves him out of bounds in about the 46-yard line, and that's where Stone will have it first down. If loose candy corn pumpkins is the best <laughs> Halloween candy. Candy corn pumpkins. Just loose, just a, just dropping a handful Drop of candy right corn pumpkins in Drop there. Drop it right in the bag. Oh, my goodness. It'll start to melt and get sticky in there. Unbelievable. <laughs> Worst one, Bitto Honey. You wow! Don't like a really? Good honey. My grandfather. Come on, honey was classic. My grandfather is turning over in his gar in his grave yeah, right yeah, now. I'm, I'm, my head's down. My grandfather <laughs> loved the bit of honey. Yeah, bit of honey and squirrel nuts were. Massengale with a handoff, seven yard gain off right tackle. Stonington starts play here in the second half. Man, I have to admit, I, you know, I didn't love the maple walnut ice cream that he had in the house all yeah. the time, but I did enjoy a good <laughs> bit of honey. Yeah, those were great. That and the uh, and the oatmeal little oatmeal cookies, the little teeny teeny oatmeal the teeny cookies. Ones? Yeah. Second down, handoff again to Mass and Gale, and not much there this time. Stopped a yard behind the line of scrimmage, right at midfield. Aponte, the first one to get him for Montville, and it'll bring up the first third down of the second half for the Bears. And I don't think this is uh, punting territory. I think this is two cracks at five yards here. For not the Bears. at all. But again, it's good to see that the Montville defense is playing aggressive right now, forcing a third down. Bubble screen. Out it goes to Spurley. Spurley's going to have a first down as he crosses the 45 of Montville. Good job with the uh, guard and tackle pulling out on that screen and kicking out the safety and corner. Again, to me, that's just like another pitch and catch running formation. Uh, and, and Stonington has been doing it very well tonight. Here's the 32-yard line of Montville, first and 10. First and 10. Jaden is really phenomenal in how he's just leading this team with his composure and, and, and these plays, again, basic but effective. 
Handoff, Massengale, and nothing there. Great job again. Aponte on the run blitz was the first one there. And he smokes Massengale, loss of two. Definitely a good job with Montville's blitzing scheme. Again, they bring a lot of pressure on the inside. They work between the tackles, that kind of pressure disrupt. And when you're trying to run counter, the one thing you want to do is destroy it up to the mesh point. That's what they did there. Second and 12. Carter's going to throw. Little screen out it goes. Phelan. Phelan shows his speed, breaks a tackle. Tough to bring down. He'll have the first down as he crosses the 30-yard line. Big physical receiver, Cole Phelan. So 10 minutes right on the dot here, 34-14 Stonington. They're driving. In the magenta zone, are we correct to say that? The, uh, well, no, they're at the 30. Oh, at the 30? I they're thought the 30. 30 to the 20 was magenta. No, the 25 to the 20 is, okay, is the magenta Okay, we'll give that zone. the... They're right now, they're in the chartreuse zone right now. Let me now. put that on my notes here. <laughs> Carter, pressured, rolling, rolling, throws, and it's complete to Spurley at the 22-yard line. I don't think that's going to be a first down. It'll be second and short. Mm -hmm. Second and three, nice catch by Spurley. You know, just being a freshman, I still got to give credit. Demetrius Charles, you, you see he tried to pursuit there. Again, some of the fundamentals we, we don't expect a freshman to do is, is the line of pursuit, but his effort is intense. Good credit for that young man working hard on that defense. Second and four, Carter dumps the screen over the middle to Massengale. Massengale, first down, breaks the tackle, heading for the end zone. Touchdown, little M&M. Speaking of Halloween candy, how about some M&M's? Maddox Massengale for six. M&M. It makes friends because his teammates are happy. <laughs> 40 to 14, and the Bears will go for two. This is the kind of offense that we were expecting Stonington to be, and that's why they scored those points. Carter throws and it's incomplete. So with 9.17 remaining in the third, 40 to 14, Stonington on top. You're watching game day live on the day.com. After the game, follow game day CT on social media to see our pick for the Scient Federal Credit Union top play. Pave the way for your students' financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high yield MySci savings account today and help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit scientefcu.org to learn more. Bears up 40 to 14 and Ethan Mahoney will kick it off from his own 40. And Montville will have its first offensive possession of the second half. Mm -hmm. As we get into the second half of this game, I'm going to tell you right now that I am going to share with you three animal encounters mm. that I have had. Oh boy. Two of them are true. One is a lie. I'm going to see if you and Peter Wappi can guess which of the three animal encounters is the lie. Okay. Two truths and a lie, animal encounter edition. Mahoney punches the kick. Chrisman takes it at the 30. Jukes makes a couple of bears miss and gets it to the 38-yard line, almost to the 40. So nice little return by Dante Chrisman. And Montville will go to work in good shape. So, Wolves will have it first and 10. Johnson will stand with Aponte to his left. Keep your eyes on Yard. It looks like the Bears are rolling double coverage to Isaiah Yard. So instead, Mopfel hands off to Aponte. Breaks one tackle, but he can't elude Mahoney. And then heading there and cleaning it up, Julian Kina. Aponte on the carry. As we start the second half, I should say that Aiden McCarthy, the Stonington Bear Jr., is turning 16. Well, he has. He's 16 years old. And really? So awesome. happy sweet 16 to happy Aiden McCarthy. Happy sweet 16 champ. Feliz cumpleaños. <laughs> you know, I, I like what they did, the coaching staff making that adjustment to eliminate that first deep play. 
uh, forcing them to run, puts that uh, Mobville team into that you know respect mode of what they have to do. So great call there to ace up their best receiver. And I think they're still going to do it here, probably for the whole series. Second down, Johnson. Hands off, nothing doing. Stonington running to the football, and Jaden Thompson works hard to get back to the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. It's funny, that was the first uh, song I learned in Spanish from Senor Vega. Yes, Mr. Vega. Senor Vega taught me happy birthday, taught me feliz cumpleaños, and then he taught me Juan Pedro Pablo de la Mar. Really? Es mi nombre, sí. Oh, my God. Cuatro yo me voy, me llamo lo que soy. Hey, Juan Pedro Pablo de la Mar, la, 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 la. Wow, and you got the la, la part down pat. <laughs> no hot sauce needed, guys. Uh, no, hot, no hot sauce senor needed. Senor Vega worked for me two years to learn the Spanish, and then Great I teacher. forgot all of it because I didn't use it, yeah. even though I lived, <laughs> in, lived in a city where half the population half the spoke population Spanish. Was, yeah. But what, he t what I learned is they spoke bad Spanish. Yes. All my friends spoke lousy Spanish. It wasn't a good... It was, it was a mixture, you know, so it was kind of tough well, to a lot of different, A lot of different dialects and cultures, it. sure. Mm -hmm. Johnson, deep ball, double coverage, and it's intercepted. Nathan Mahoney goes up at the 40 and takes it away from Riley Byer, and the Bears hold. And you've seen already the adjustment in the second half. Yes. Double coverage on the outside. You got it, brother. Double coverage on the outside. Have the safety play over top and the corner play under. And right there, another great play by the Bears. Good schemes that they've had right now to make the adjustment in the second half. Keep the momentum on their side. Well, I think they learned a lot about their defense in the first half, which mm -hmm. is uh, if they were going to you know, do the outside press coverage with no help to the outside, yep. uh, they were going to give up big plays. Though the defense, I think this is a much better uh, defense for them. Now it's going to be very tough. Carter from McGugan and over the top, well defended out there by Riley Byer, and it will be incomplete second down. So we're talking about how the season can progress and how they get better. These are the things that you want as a coach experienced person to see that these players can actually adjust in second half. And not just because they're in the lead, they're going to kind of take it easy. You have to be competitive. You have to adapt. This gets more film out there for them, for coaches that their opponents are going to have to break down. Carter, bubble screen, failing. Running downhill, breaks a tackle up near the sticks. So tough. Once Cole Phelan gets running north and south, mm -hmm. very difficult to bring him down. Yeah. Strong, bulky young men right now, really coming off the ball. And they, they put their shoulders, they really got a good shoulder pad level, and they work downhill. They're not going to just stand up and take a hit. They give the hit. You know, you're talking about the, you, you're knocking some sweet tarts down here. That was one of my least favorite, though. Well, then just, you can't have any. It just had a little, it gives me that. Uh, well, I just had a little for my throat. There you go. <laughs> Carter on the keeper, has a first down, breaks the 45, and the 45 still on his feet, heads to the outside, and finally tripped up as he crosses the 30-yard line by Dante Crispin, but Jaden Carter, a little bit of everything tonight. Boy, what a block by the guard kicking out, and he ran right through that hole, and everything else was him. Awesome job. First the Bears the 30-yard line. So down at the 28-yard line, first and 10 Bears. I'll tell you, Jaden is a legit quarterback in the league. He is doing a phenomenal job today. You know, we've seen uh, a lot of different quarterback play. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, Ben Perry up till this point yeah. had, had been sort of the guy who looked the most comfortable in the offense. Carter mm -hmm. looks very, very comfortable in this offense. Definitely. We have a timeout, Stonington. And we're going to keep it here because I'm going to tell the animal encounter okay, number one. Going. So there, there's going to be three animal encounters. Two are true. One is a lie. All right. Uh, coming home from uh, a 4th of July, uh, the fireworks down at the Sailfest fireworks. Mm -hmm. I watched them with at my, my, at my dad's house down on Pequot Avenue. And my wife and my son and I were coming home around midnight. Turned onto our street in Colchester. My son sound asleep in his car seat. He was just a little lad. My wife sound asleep next to me in the front seat. When my uh, headlights reflected on an animal but it was foggy, you know, it was like the, that misty fog that you get. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't see what it was, but the headlights were too high for it to be like a dog or a cat. Yeah. So I'm thinking, huh, what's that? I get a little closer, I get a little closer, stop the car, elbow my wife. She wakes up. I go, honey, is, do you see that? And she goes, is that a bull? A bull? And I go, yeah, that's a bull. <laughs> and she's half asleep. She goes, okay, hold on. And she opens the car door to get out and shoo it away when I remind her, no, that's a bull. 
<laughs> and eventually the bull went away to the neighboring farm near our house. Okay. Animal encounter number one. All right. Carter hands it off. Big hole to Massingale. Massingale tough to bring down. Gets to the 10-yard line. It's going to be first down Stonington. And they're going to mark him down at the 10-and-a-half-yard line again. So, again, it's going to be first and 10 rather than first and goal. And the Bears are knock, knock, knocking on touchdown's door. Balls on the 11. Carter hands it to Massengale. Massengale rolls Massengale on the carry. to about the 5. Jaden Thompson on the tackle for Montville. That'll bring up second down. I don't know. That bull got me going first. <laughs> I'm waiting for the other ones, but I'll tell you. <laughs> Carter to throw. Corner fade. Up it goes. McGugan. Does he have the feet in? Yeah, a oh, bit no. Out. Just out of bounds. You can just see the much. disappointment on his face. We're going to look at the That's replay of that in in the future because he was right tiptoeing on the line but just out of bounds third and eight kids got great hands and great field awareness though so third down and we'll call it seven and a half Carter has Mass and Gale to his right Carter waiting now he rolls left, rolls left, looking, looking, backpedaling, caught, breaks a tackle, throws, end zone, intercepted in the end zone. Intercepted, Zeke Stanley. And after all the crazy effort, there is a flag on the play, and who knows how much of this will stand. So Carter showed elusiveness and vision and eventually threw an interception in the end zone illegal band downfield you think probably which will deal decline Where which will get mop the, the ball at the 20 yard line let's see so we're waiting on the officials signal Illegal man downfield against Stonington. Declined. Interception will stand. First down, Montville at their own 20. That's a great opportunity for Montville right there. So a lot of effort there for Jaden Carter. And instead of he gets an interception. Now, are they not? They don't seem to be doing touchback. Did he come out of the end zone? I believe he did. And he got tackled at the one-yard line. So I don't know if that was marked right. Oh, that's Should've. a tough break from Montville because yeah. I thought he I thought he intercepted I thought it would in the be end first zone. First and ten into twenty. Yeah. And instead, that's about as bad as it gets. <laughs> Again, that's the youthful experience. You know, sometimes they don't know. They want to get out there and try to score. And in that situation, it would have been best just to catch the ball and lay down. In the shadow of their own goal line, they are right there on the one. Johnson will be standing in his end zone. Moves Aponte over, expecting some pressure. Hands off to Aponte. Tough run, maybe two. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure they're giving him that. Maybe a yard and a half. It's going to be second and long. So we'll see if Monville wants to get daring, but I think you're going to see the continued double coverage on the outside against the wideouts. I think Montville going to have to use the middle of the field here, which is always so dangerous. Mm -hmm. Second down. I mean, I don't think they want to punt it out of their own end zone either, so they're going to have to try to move the chains. At least one first down here. You definitely want to have at least 13 plus yards of cushion. <laughs> we always expected our punters to have that. Much Wide space. pitch. And in the end zone, it's going to be a safety. Jaden Thompson got the pitch, had no chance safety for Stonington. So they don't get six, they get two. And they'll get the ball back. Or are they saying that he was, they, are they marking it back at the one again? Oh, wow. I, they must have given him forward progress to the one. That's a, um, that's a generous, 
Generous interpretation from the officials. But that's going to bring up third down. Third and ten. They might have saw the bull. I, I don't I don't know how. I mean, I didn't see him get out, but maybe that, that very first uh, it, burst. Contact, yeah. So third and ten from the half-yard line. Pass just out of the reach of Riley Byer. He was defended well from Nathan Mahoney, and now Montville will have to punt it with no room at all. Yeah, in special teams, we always want to make sure that the punter has enough distance because now the steps are provided. So if you're at 13 yards, you could punt the ball and get it within that 11-yard marker. But now that it's short, he's going to have to take a quick one step or even just a punt, kick that ball out the hole. I mean, you see Cooper Light, the return man for Stonington, standing inside his own 30-yard line. Mm -hmm. High snap, out of the end zone, and that will be a safety. So a lot of this and that, but a safety for Stonington. <laughs> Tack on two for the Bears. 42 to 14. All right, animal story number two. Animal B, encounter number two. All right. Uh, I moved from Colchester to Salem to an apartment uh, and uh, noticed a weird set of, uh, of, of animal um, excrement in my yard uh, and well as the yard of my neighbor and uh, a lot of footprints and stuff I couldn't <coughs> figure out. And I went to uh, get pizzas for the guys who were helping me move and I came back and they said, uh, uh, your neighbor is a pig. I said, that's not very nice. I, mind. I don't even know my neighbor yet call my neighbor a pig and they said no no your neighbor has a, a pig a 250 pound pot belly pig that destroys the yard and does the business Woo. animal encounter number two I had a 250 pound pig as a neighbor a bull a pig boy it's getting tough Montville will kick it off and uh, Stonington will have it with a 28 point lead Kick comes down right at midfield. Straight up the gut goes Spurley. And Spurley will take it all the way inside the 30-yard line where Stonington will already have it in the crushed brick zone at the 29. Now we got the crushed brick zone with magenta to the red zone. Talk about a Crayola box tree. waiting to happen. Oh, my God. Was, my favorite red was brick red. Crushed brick? Mm hmm. The 64 count. Which count. is different than regular brick. Yeah. yeah. Color Bears, changes. The 64 count was my favorite. Line. Couldn't do the 16s. Didn't give me enough energy. Carter hands it to Mahoney. And I'll tell you, one person who has not quit, Hector Aponte, has that played man a playing. fabulous game at linebacker. Again, he is that A gap kind of blitzing backer that also has got good low level. He could really make good plays. So we got a player down on the field, so we're going to take a timeout here. 42-14, Stonington on top of Montville. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in Waterford. Game Day is a production of The Day Publishing Company. If you'd like to support Game Day and help us continue to bring you the best in Connecticut high school sports, please consider purchasing a print or digital subscription to The Day at theday.com slash subscribe. So second down, Carter stands just outside the 35-yard line. Montville rushing its defense onto the field. And now the officials will blow the whistle, and the play can begin on second and 12. Hard count. Nice job by Carter. Draws Montville off. That'll give him five. Slide on the play. Offside on the defense. Five yards. So that'll bring it to second and eight. So a nice gain without doing anything. And we're going to get another. Offsides, back-to-back -back hard counts. Flag 
And so just like that, Sonnington's gotten 10 yards without snapping a football. If you practice it and it works, second utilize it. <laughs> so it went from second and, excuse me, from first and 14 to second and four for the benefit of two five yard penalties. Handoff. Straight up the gut. Touchdown, Dominic Ritaco. It's Taco Thursday at Stonington. Woo! 48 14. The senior right up the gut. And the Bears pile it on. I can tell you another future pound of pasta is going to be the most annoying uh, fan uh, instrument. sound oh. creating instrument. Oh boy, that's going to be a good uh, one. That's the, the bangers, the, yep. the cowbells, the, the rocks, the rocks, the kazoo things. Oh yeah, there's a whole bunch. Hey, we're going to get an extra point attempt from Stonington, uh, and that's uh, that's no good. So 48-14 uh, with 2.30 remaining in the third period. We're going to keep it here for Animal Encounter number three. Mm. Animal Encounter number three occurs when uh, we first bought our house uh, 20 years ago. Uh, we uh, had not used the fireplace for a while uh, moving in because we moved in in the spring. So we had the spring and in the summer. And in the winter... Uh, I went to go, and uh, I, you know, I'd never had my own fireplace before, so I was told, you know, the first thing to do is make sure I cleaned out the flue. <laughs> so I went to clean out the flue, uh, and I opened up the flue only to find uh, a dead possum that had been living in my chimney and evidently died in my chimney. Uh, so I had a dead possum when I went to clean out the flue. Uh, needless to say, I did not use the fire. I did what any good husband would do. I closed the flu and just told my wife reasons why we couldn't use the fire, uh, you know, the rest of the winter because I didn't want to go touch the dead possum. That's oh. the Animal Encounters 1, 2, and 3. One is a lie. Two of them are true. The next big time out, we'll see which I think I got which. it. Give so me a clue on that one. I'm good. Mahoney will kick it off for Stonington. Kick. Taken in the air. Nice job by Jaden Thompson. And he's to the 35 where Montville will have it first and 10 at their own 35 as they trail 48-14, which I don't believe gets us a running clock. We're one point off. Oh, that extra point. They had only gone for two. The Wolves. are now going to have it first and 10 at the 35-yard line. They'll stay with their starters, Aiden Thompson, Johnson, Aiden Johnson, excuse me, Aiden Johnson in the quarterback position to throw. Pressured, sacked. That ball is loose. It looks like, our, it looks like Tyler McLaughlin, the freshman, or was that... Armani Patterson, the senior. Can't tell which one fell on it. Looks like it was the senior Patterson. But that's a huge loss as Johnson was sacked and that ball came loose. Yeah. So that was the center. The center, senior Armani Patterson, got back there and fell on it. But that's a huge loss, a loss of almost 20 yards. And yeah, they still haven't found a way to stop that inside blitz pressure. And... Uh, yeah, just, just really tough for them right now. So second and 27. Hand off. Nothing there again for Jaden Thompson. Those two defensive tackles for Stonington have been doing a great job keeping the double teams and getting off their blocks, letting linebackers flow and make plays. Um, you know, their effort just definitely is noted. <coughs> big 71 and big 55. <laughs> Those two guys are playing real hard. Zachary Anderson, 
flag on the play against Stonington. A big penalty against the Bears. Brings the Wolves all the way back to the 30-yard line. Gets back much of the loss, and it will be third down <coughs> and 13. Looks like the ball came loose. And Stonington comes out with it. Charlie Orsdale with the recovery. Senior with the recovery, and the Bears are in business. I gotta tell you a funny story about my first time here at Stonington when it was the, the grass field. Um, we pulled in and I saw three horses that were practicing on the field for the first practice. And then I remember Jimmy looking at me saying, that's not gonna happen any, anymore. <laughs> Rotaco gets about four on first down. So the Bears taking it with about 30 seconds remaining here in the third period, up 48-14. Second and seven. Carter throws, out it goes to Spurley. Spurley cuts it inside and drags the tackler inside the 10. They're gonna mark him down just outside the 10 and then they're gonna be first down. It looks like right at the 10, so it should be first and goal. And I don't see the chains coming, but we're at the end of the third period. So 48-14, Stonington on top. Fourth quarter action coming up. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. After the game, follow Game Day CT on social media to see our pick for the Scient Federal Credit Union top play. Pave the way for your students' financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high yield my size savings account today and help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit sitefcu.org to learn more. Game day is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. Part of our commitment to serving our patients includes providing information that helps them to make more informed decisions about their oral health needs. WaterfordDentalHealth.com is a website and a resource that we hope you'll find both useful and interesting. Just remember that all that's good begins with a smile, and your smile can only get better at Waterford Dental Health. Visit WaterfordDentalHealth.com. Fourth quarter action. Stonington all over Montville, 48-14. It's going to be first and goal Bears with the ball resting just inside the 10-yard line. Carter going to throw instead, throws a little pass to Spurley, and Spurley will have it down to about the five. It'll be second and goal at the five. So good to see the offensive linemen fly off their assignments and get to a hat-on-a-hat -hat technique with these younger DBs. Their offensive line, again, they're not big, but they're very athletic. I think that, again, that, that summer core program that they had has made them all athletic. And that's what's really important with this team. Check that it's on the five yard line. Second on the five yard line, five. second and goal. Carter hands off for Taco. Touchdown number two for Dominic Ritaco. And the Bears elevate to 54-14. So we'll see if they go for two here, or if they try the extra point. Looks like they're gonna go for two. Worsdale to the left of Carter. Worsdale gets it straight up the gut. And Charlie Worsdale gets the two point conversion. I'm guessing that is not a common thing for that young man. He is excited and it's 56-14 Stonington. So we're going to keep it here. It's time for the guesses. 
of Pasta Santa Bria, Peter Wapi at what was the lie? Which of those three animal encounters did not happen? Pasta. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to go first that the bull is true because the missus got out the car to help you out. And when she does that, she takes care of business. So I give her credit. That bull is a true story. When it comes to the pig, it's a 50-50 for me because you said pot belly pig. And there's not a lot of pot belly pigs up in, the, in your area. But I'm going to hold off because I think that might be the one. But then I go back to the possum. You know, and then I say, you know what? You throw a curveball in there. A dead possum playing dead as a dead possum is impossible. So therefore, I'm going to say that that was the one that didn't come out true. All right. Peter Wappy, what do you think is the, uh, is the lie of those three stories? Number three is the lie because the possum is native to the southern hemisphere. And we have opossums. Ooh. So you're gonna wow. use three on on my inability on my inability to be uh, Jack Hanna and National <laughs> Wild Kingdom. National. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. Now, uh, by Omar. virtue of that, even if it's true, it'd be a lie either way. Okay. <laughs> Kickoff comes down and falling to the ground at the 30-yard line. Montville will have it there. Well, I will tell you that the bull story. <laughs> is absolutely true it continues with my greyhound my son and my yep. wife all involved but the bull story is true it was yep. a one-year-old juvenile bull that wow. had gotten its head stuck in the stockade fencing thrown the stockade fencing off and living its best life <laughs> going for best a trip to the night yeah. <laughs> that's beautiful the uh pig story is also true that's what's up and uh thankfully i have never had a possum or an opossum <laughs> in my chimney <laughs> in my new house. Well done for two different reasons. You both picked Peter's out the lie. Beast. I love it. I love Peter. That was a good one. Jack Hanna <laughs> call, called in to give Peter that uh, that helpful hint. <laughs> Johnson on first down. Looks to throw. Slings it and it's tipped by Ritako at the line. Very active hands on the line for Stonington at second down. Awesome job there by the defense. Again, getting good pressure, and then when they see that quarterback's getting ready to rip the ball out, have their hands up. Several batted balls today for that defense. We are in running clock time here in the fourth period as it is a 42-point lead for Stonington. And for those families out there that don't know, is it 35-plus points that causes that? clock to trigger and be a running clock, right? Yeah, which, so for a lot of years, uh, we battled, uh, like I say we meaning the ad administration of high school football in Connecticut, battled with how to balance sportsmanship mm -hmm. uh, and uh, coaching. And I'll get more into that after this. Aponte with the handoff, nice hole, and he rattles off about seven yards. So, you know, when, when all of us grew up, there was no quote-unquote mercy rule. You could beat someone as badly as you wanted to, and uh, we relied on the integrity of coaches to do their best, but it, you know, it was a very difficult task without that. So after a while, a rule was put into place. It was often called the Cochran Rule after uh, Jack Cochran, head coach, but it was said that if you beat a team by 50 points, your coach would be suspended for the next game. Which Over 50, right? Yeah, which is... An impossible thing to, to, and it was such a bad idea. It was an impossible thing to navigate because yep. kids were told, no, you can't score now. And it actually put kids as Aponte gets the handoff again and breaks a tackle. He's really back to the original line of scrimmage. It really, I mean, kids, you know, JV kids were in and they were break, break, breaking out into the open and falling down or else their coach was going to get suspended. And other teams were taking knees. Were, other teams were showing strategy of we're going to try to beat you into beating us by more than 50. Right. So we can get you. It was not a good idea. So recently they went to the running clock and the idea of integrity of coaches. And yep. I think you see now most coaches don't try to rub it in and most coaches don't try to bury other teams um, but if they if that's the case you got a running clock which takes away a lot of the, the sting yep. and that's where we are snap is there punt is high nice and kick. comes down at the 38 yard line Cooper Light makes one man miss and gets it back to midfield and that's where Stonington will have it first and ten with 8.02 remaining here in the ball game. Peter, where are we next? Next week it'll be the 20th. It'll be next game for us will be Friday the 20th. Where are we? East Lime at NFA. East Lime, the Vikings Ooh, at Vikings. NFA. Wildcats, wow. NFA means I'll be in the we'll be in the bleachers. Yes. Because we can't get up in the scaffolding. That's all right. You don't want any part of it. It's the gonna be cold too. Might be. 
Now, this is also on Thursday the 19th. There's going to be the ECC Cross Country Championships, and game day will have highlights uh, and interviews following the ECC Cross Country Championships on the 19th, and then the 20th will be at NFA. Keeper, Carter, big hole, first down to the 35-yard line of Montville. So Jaden Carter with a big game. And then we're heading in the following week to championship week where we'll have the boys and girls soccer finals, the volleyball finals, as well as the so we'll have girls soccer, boys soccer, and volleyball, divisions one and two. In addition to swimming highlights. Gonna have to get the speedo out for the for that. Do you actually run with the cross country runners while you, they're running? I don't I don't run even when chased. Hand off <laughs> straight up the middle. Rataco breaks a tackle, bounces it to the outside. He's sniffing end zone for touchdown number three, and he's in. Dominic Rataco. Touchdown Bears. And he's saying, that's three. I got three. What a really good, exciting team. I thought these kids are blocking for each other, helping each other out, and uh, man, they're, they're the real ones in the ECC right now. So into the game is Ethan Mahoney, and he's gonna try again to kick the extra point out of the hold of Nathan Mahoney. So Mahoney and Mahoney. Snaps good, holds down, kick is up, and it's good. Extra point is through, and with 555 and counting remaining here, it is 62-14 Stonington. The cowbells are rocking. 63-14 Stonington on top. Of course, after the game, you're going to want to join, go to all of our social media, Game Day CT, and you're going to want to see the interview with the winning head coach. I think I can go out on a limb and say that'll be with A.J. Massengill, as well as the player of the game, and you're going to want to find the science play of the game, which will be up as well. So you're going to want to make sure that you check out all of the social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, I will not call it the other thing, uh, check us all out. IG, Insta, the gram. Kick bounces at the 40. Nice move. Still on his feet. Ball's loose. And the Bears have it at the 40 yard line. Recovery made by William Johnson, and the Bears <clears throat> have it. And I mean, I think this is where this is where we just hand the ball off. And with 4:24 and a running clock remaining, you could also see them go into, <coughs> into some sort of alternate formation. But we'll mm -hmm. see what Coach Massengale wants to do here. Yeah, the biggest thing is to keep the ball on the field, and I try to get the clock out here. And Munch this time down. So we're going to get some new players into the ball game. Yep. It's a good opportunity for these youngsters to step in and a, a beautiful night tonight. Reese Phelan, number 37, on the field, off the field, not sure what's going on. 19, Sean DeCesare in at quarterback. We got motion, we got a flag, and I think finally they're going to call a timeout and get these things organized. Yeah, they're missing a tackle there. Yeah, so, get a timeout on the Come field. On, we'll take a there. quick break. 63-14. You're listening to Game Day live on theday.com. Yes, well, as we head into a brand new season on Game Day, we want something brand new to come to all of you as well. Game Day launching its merchandise store for the first time. Now, as you know, greatness has no off-season, and Game Day has no off season either. We're always working to provide you the best we can do, and that includes great merch. So come on into the merchandise store for game day. As the season progresses, 
Who knows who's going to say what that'll make it on to the next game day t-shirt. Find out in the merch store. Sixty three fourteen. Stonington. Spurly in motion. Clock running with three thirty. Snap is high, it's on the turf, and I think the Bears fell on it. So it was Logan Christina that fell on it, but the clock was still run. So, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to say that the the second team of the Bears is a little less in sync than the. It's, it's a little <laughs> the bit. First team. It's a little bit off. You could see that from the snap. But again, this is good for these youngsters to come in and kind of clean up the game. It also makes it uh, you know sportsmen like to have our youngsters playing. They're going to play probably this weekend together, right? Yes. High snap. Hand it off to Christina. Wolves still playing hard. They run to the football, and that's going to bring a third down and long for Stonington. So third down and long for the Bears. Peter, are we uh, are we prepared to to say the exciting thing that we think is going to happen on Thursday at the Cross Country Championships from our perspective, or are we going to wait? All right. So Peter, come on. Let's. I want. I want. You're the. You're the man. What. What's gonna. What do we have in store for people at the cross country championships on Thursday? So weather permitting, we're going to film the race with a drone. Wow, you surprised me on that one, huh? I thought you were gonna run. That's okay. No, nope, we were so, gonna do me with a GoPro. Yeah. But we decided that the drone footage yeah. would be much better, yeah. more encompassing, and, and last longer. Ball of turf picked up. Off to the races for the Wolves. Jaden Thompson. Touchdown, Touchdown Wolves! Jaden Thompson, the sophomore, picked up the fumble and took it to the house for the Wolves. So the Montville defense getting them six. And yes, the drone footage is going to be very exciting. I've seen it for collegiate mm -hmm. cross country. Peter showed it to me. Um, it's I think amazing it's gonna, That's oh. how, how that has evolved through the X uh, games now. They have that as a professional race. In, in the X Games. Yeah, yeah drone racing. Amazing. Yeah. There's your future, Peter. Get comfortable with this drone, and you can enter the X Games draw Drone Racing Championship. Under a minute remaining here with the running clock. And Montville calls a timeout. So we'll take a quick timeout as well. 63 to 20. Stonington on top. You're watching Game Day Live on Day.com. The Day strives to cover stories our readers care about. With a feature called Curious CT, we make it easier for you to tell us what you want to know about the people, places, and issues in southeastern Connecticut. You submit a question, readers vote, and we investigate and report. Go to theday.com slash Curious CT for more details. You ask, you vote, we investigate. Game Day is a production of The Day Publishing Company. If you'd like to support Game Day and help us continue to bring you the best in Connecticut high school sports, please consider purchasing a print or digital subscription to The Day at theday.com slash subscribe. Sixty-three to twenty. Forty-seven seconds remaining here in the ball game. Montville will go for two. Aiden Johnson going to throw, slings it, and it's caught for the two-point conversion again by Andrew McElwee. The sophomore McElwee with his second two-point conversion catch of the night, and that tacks two more on for the Wolves. Sixty-three twenty-two. Stonington on top, and once Montville kicks this thing off, I think that effectively ends it. Yeah. And so we'll have our wrap up, and uh, then we'll be heading out of here. Of course, next week at NFA for NFA and East Lime. It's gonna be a good showdown. First chance to see both of those two teams. Mm -hmm. 
I'm really impressed with the Stonington team. Very well organized and uh, very competitive for four quarters. I think if they continue to do this, they'll be a very good team down the road to face those two big teams that they have to face with so Griswold and Wyndham. Next week, Saturday the 21st, this Montville team will be at Bacon Academy for a noon kickoff. And Stonington on Friday the 20th will be home to Weaver in the next games up for both of these two teams. Popped up kick, comes down to Phelan. Phelan breaks it up the middle. Phelan still on his feet and crosses over the 40 yard line of Montville as the clock will tick, 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 35 seconds remaining. And I think that'll do it as they have, we have an injured wolf on the field. They're gonna attend to the injured wolf. They're gonna get him up. And he's gonna head off to the sideline. As he does, the officials will wind the clock. The first and 10 for the Bears. First and 10 Bears, the clock will wind, however, and I don't think they are gonna even have to snap the ball again, but. Waiting on the officials to do that. There they go, the officials are winding the clock. And we don't have to even snap the football. So there's going to be your final score. Stonington, 63. Montville, 22. Had a lot of fun tonight, Coach. Talking about Halloween candy, yeah. anim animal candy encounters. <laughs> yeah, brother. The best of Norwegian pastries. Mm -hmm. A little bit of everything tonight. Again, Thursday, cross-country highlights. Friday, NFA and East Lime. But later on tonight, on all of our social media and game day CT, you're going to want to check out the interviews with the coach, the player of the game, as well as the science play of the game. No shortage of possible plays of the game tonight, right. as this one had highlights from start to finish. So, for the coach, Pasta Santabria, for the beautiful Arnie De La Rosa. That's right, brother. And for all the game day crew, I'm Casey O'Neill saying good night, everybody. God bless.